one ten nine eight seven six five four three two one. Yeah, of course I can just try not to add out of breath. <laughs> Me as well? No? Welcome back to the Modus Super Series. This evening, Group B reaches its conclusion. But this afternoon, we got two more players through two finals night. Lads here to discuss it with me. Chris Mason made quite hard work of it in the end, didn't he? He did. We were here this morning saying one win, he'll be through, he should get it done early on. But it's never easy, is it, here at the Super Series? There's always something going on. There's always a bit of drama, always something in the script. But credit to Chris Mason because after those first couple of performances, he could have let it go to him. We've seen players in the past who have had really good starts, five out of five, not go through. So credit Chris composed himself got over the line and now just be thankful he's through to Saturday night. And Gary Robson along with him, but a penny for the thoughts of Alan Norris right now, who won all of his matches today. How on earth is he feeling at this moment, would you say? Yeah, we saw a few weeks ago, didn't we, Scott Walters win all five matches in the first day of Group C, lose all five the next day. Alan Norris didn't lose all five matches yesterday, so he must be feeling even worse than Scott. Um, a real massive charge. The one thing that I thought was almost the most cruel was that he went into his last match without any chance, despite winning all four matches to get there. Um, but it would have been either him doing it today or Chris Mason winning all five yesterday and not getting through. So it's just one of those things. Um, you have to be on your metal from the start in that group and he lost the first three games 4-3. And a word from you on Chris Mason. I spoke to him this evening and he was saying that mentally he's found it quite difficult, quite draining and also he had a bit of pain in his arm and mm -hmm. he said the one thing he now does have is sympathy for those players when he's commentating on day five. It really is a gruelling challenge and, and do you feel that maybe Mace kind of underestimated that side of things? Possibly, and we might see that next week if he makes it through to Champions Week because he's going to have to do it all over again if he gets through on Saturday night. I think he'll appreciate the rest this evening, starting later in this session tomorrow. Um, but one thing I do want to say is congratulations, Chris, because, of course, he's been announced for the, the World Seniors, hasn't he? And uh, it might be that he's got the bug because there were a few murmurs that he was invited last year and didn't accept the invitation, and now he's thought, actually, I could go there and win it. And based on what we've seen, he could. He could indeed. Right then, Richie Housen in action first this evening. He's in pole position to qualify. We were saying, weren't we, you just mentioned it there about Chris Mason, one win and he's through. That's the same for Richie Housen this evening. Do you see that coming in the first match? Yes, in short, I think. You look at the form guide of last night, look, Wes played really well in that last game against Richie, but Richie just found another gear. But if you actually put the mean game together, which we speak quite a lot about, on commentary, Richie was streets above, well, not just Wes, but everybody else in the group. So if he plays to that kind of mean and everyone's around the same, then there's only one outcome, I think, this evening. Do you see anyone getting into that top three, Paul Nicholson or Wes Newton getting yeah, in there? Yeah, Wes Newton's the most likely, I think, and I think this first game is massive for him because Henry was right. He played really well in the last game. It was too late, really. Um, won a match without really playing that well, but I think if he starts well, he can go on the kind of roll, the kind of run that Alan Norris did this afternoon. He's that kind of player. So, um, yeah, this first match is really interesting because if Richie wins it, of course, he's through, but if Wes wins it, then it blows the group wide open. Come on then, as it is such a big game, your predictions for this opener? Housen 4-2. Murph? Newton 4-3. I love it. A bit of controversy there. A bit of a, a mix-up from Murph in that one. A word on Paul Nicholson before we close this one out. I spoke to him just now. He said he really wanted that big fish yesterday. That's the one thing that he wanted. Didn't happen for him. How do you see him performing tonight? I think the fact he's now had that one day on the stage is absolutely massive. When we saw it with Chris Mason from the Monday into Tuesday in Group A. 
having that day on here, having four games obviously in his case, Chris had five, that game craft, just learning about this stage, the intricacies of the environment we have here at the Super Series will stand him in good stead. We've been in the commentary box, he's been in the commentary box long enough to know what it's like, but it's a different beast when we actually stood here. It is indeed. Right then, we get the action underway in just under five minutes' time on Sporty Stuff TV. Make sure you come and join us then. Ta very much.
The Modus Super Series, brought to you in association with Bet365, Betfair, Betfred, Coral, Labrooks, Paddy Power, Unibet and William Hill. Good evening and welcome back to the Moda Super Series. By the close of play this evening, we will have our completed lineup for finals night. Of course, it is the conclusion of Group B this evening. And at this point, it is Richie Housen who leads the way, having won all of his games last night. But before we get into that, let's hand over to Henry Deacon to run us through what happened in this morning's session. After winning five from five on Thursday, Chris Mason strolled his way through to the finals night tomorrow night. This 100 was his highlight against Alan Norris as he got his way through in the end. He'll be joined by Gary Robson, who top Group C following the end of 10 games between the lot. This 106 helped him beat the aforementioned Mason. Alan Norris won every single game on Friday, but it still wasn't enough. For him to qualify through to finals night, this 167 was his highlight of the day. John Boy Walton's big victory came against Mason. It was helped by this 1 2 1 checkout against the ace. Meanwhile, Barry Bates just couldn't get it going on Friday, although he did pick up this victory against Walton thanks to that 98 checkout. And Mark Layton couldn't make the progress from Thursday into Friday. He struggled on the second day of action for him at the Super Series, although he did get this 1-2-1 one, one against Alan Norris. Yeah, so it's Gary Robson and Chris Mason who join Mark Dudbridge in finals night so far. We can see confirmation of that with the Group C table. Chris Murphy alongside me to reflect on that. I've spoken to Chris Mason today. He did struggle to get over the line in the end, I think it's fair to say. But he was struggling as it is day five. Yeah, and it's we've said it many times in commentary. It's a marathon, not a sprint, the old cliche. And there are different ways to win marathons, aren't they? Chris Mason raced ahead in this group and then kind of crawled over the line in the end, but he got there and that's the main thing. And we've seen different elements of him this week. We've seen him sweep opponents aside. Today he had to grind through, got there in the end with a lot of pressure on him as well because it looked like it was going to be a cruel slipping through his fingers of the, the place at finals night tomorrow. Yeah, I think we'll see a newfound respect from Mace when he does return to the commentary box as well. I think it's fair to say. Alan Norris, though, penny for his thoughts because he was flawless today, wasn't he? Yeah, and... You know, any other week or most of the weeks you would see that points haul get through. Um, won all of his matches today to go with the one that he won yesterday. Very, very disappointed for him. Um, but look, he looks like he's taking it in good spirits. He tweeted um, and said that, that it's been a great experience and he's, he feels like he's getting back to his best. So that's the right way to look at it because Alan Norris is a player who has got ambitions of getting back onto the tour etc yeah at this stage in his career that's the most important thing i think that he can take away from this as i mentioned then three players already through two finals night tonight that lineup will be completed as group b reaches its conclusion confirmation there that mark dudbridge came through in group a chris mason gary robson joining him of those three players already through who do you think is going to pose the biggest threat tomorrow night um oh, interesting question uh Mark Dubridge has had a couple of days off. Depends how he's feeling, because he, he wasn't too happy with his performances either. Um, Chris Mason's been the most consistent player over the course of the week. Different kind of stand from him today, but he's got a chance to, to rest and refresh. Gary Robson has been up and down, but you know you don't need to be up for long, do you, on finals night? In, in a strange way, um, you, can, you can get away with a defeat, and then three good matches, and suddenly you're through to Champions Week. So... Um, 
I've got no idea, Abby. <laughs> and Richie Housen, of course, leads the way in Group B at the moment. A win in his opener could secure his place in finals night. Do you think he's going to get it here against Wes Newton? Yeah, and, and if your previous question had been who's the most likely on finals night, I might say Richie Housen, even though he's not already through. Um, I'm not sure if he'll get the win in this match, but I think he'll get it at some point this evening. And I actually, and I can say this really loud because we worry the players can hear us sometimes. I actually think they'll both get through. Excellent stuff. It's almost like he planned that just because he knew they were playing in the first game. It is then Richie Housen up first. He's taken out three ton plus finishes in yesterday's action. This superb 1-6-1 to go with the 1-2-1 and the 1-4-6 as well. That was a real key component of his game yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, brilliant. If you're going to start like that, then it just must give you so much confidence. I think the first three bullseyes that he went for, he hit. Um, finishing like that is just spectacular and if he can do anything like that tonight then you know, it won't be long before that win that he needs comes indeed right then let's head into our first game of the evening session henry over to you Good evening, Abby. Good evening, everyone. Welcome along to Friday night here at the Moda Super Series. It's part two of Decision Day where we're going to see the final three players that will progress their way through to finals night tomorrow night here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. At the halfway stage here in Group B, it's Richie Housen who has full advantage. He won four from four on Thursday. One victory tonight to any stage at any point. We'll see him through. He takes on Wes Newton, who won one from four yesterday and has work to do if he is going to make up the Super Six that will take part in Saturday night's final here at the Modus Super Series. A very good evening to you, wherever you are tuning in to us across the country and across the world. Strap yourselves in because we are in for a night of tungsten tension down memory lane with some legends of the game. We've got former world finalist Antonio Shea. We've got a former world championship semi-finalist Andy Jenkins. Well, like Two-time so major fast. finalist Wes Newton. The former players champion Paul Nicholson. And Richie Housen, who has the first darts of the night, a star of the Seniors Tour in 2022. His highlight being a semi-final at the World Seniors Masters at the 76. Lakeside at the back end of May. Marco Meyer is your referee for all 10 games this evening. And Chris Murphy is alongside me in the commentary box. Yeah, looking forward to tonight's action, Henry. 59. I think that uh, we could see uh, a quite hard, fought, closely contested group here. And as we saw at the start of tonight in those highlights there, Richie Housen produced some really 16. good stuff yesterday. I'm going to ask you a similar question to what the one that Abby asked me because Richie Housen is almost through. Now, if we're going to say Housen... Dudbridge, Mason 55. and Robson are the, the players that are going to be at finals night, plus two others. Who would you be expecting to see seal that final spot at Champions Week? I don't see any change in the top three. I think Jenkins and O'Shea will take the other two spots alongside Housen. In what order, I don't know, but I think them two will go through. And from the six from Saturday? 100. Hard to judge Housen on one night. But if he plays to the level of last night, I would say him. Well, he started last night with a few bangs, didn't he? A few fireworks. And he's left himself 170 in this opening leg. Does not 61. have to go for it. But you require 170. Well, there is a little difference between me and Henry, of course, because I've tipped Wes Newton to make it. Sixteen, which is good news because we both tipped the same top two and got it wrong. So Housen would have to lose all four of his matches not to qualify Nine tonight. Nine two five. Richie, you require one hundred and ten. Triple eighteen. We have 72 remaining here for Housen to take the first leg. Newton then. 131. 131 for a break of throw in the opener. Yeah, went for treble 17 to maybe throw it tops tops. That was a bit of a, a trademark of a certain Alan Norris this afternoon. Which you require 12. Double six for Housen. Yeah, Double such a big part of Housen. what he's been doing here at the Super Series. And he hits his first one. Second in leg this match. is to throw first. Now, Game on. Three legs away from booking that place. Interesting as well, when you look at how he's 
fixtures are spread out tonight, Richie Howson. Plays in his first match, plays again in game four, plays again in game seven, then plays in game ten. So he's got two to three matches all the time. And if he does lose, he's always got the last chance to get through. When he plays Tony O'Shea 41. in game ten, even if he's lost all three and three players are somehow above him in the group, he still knows that a win then would be enough. Yeah, he's not in one of those slots, a bit like what Paul Nicholson has tonight, where he's constantly 100. on and off. He has got gaps. But it's amazing to think that it's 10 past 10 on a Friday night, and we're already saying Richie Housen's three legs away from qualification. That was how much he dominated night one of this 97. group. It was the night of the owl. Ninety-five, And I think it's fair to say we didn't expect the night last night that we got from Wes Newton. He didn't expect it. I'll let you into a little secret as well. He actually said 41. the words to me when, when I passed through the practice room in the middle of the evening. He said, I feel sorry for you trying to explain this because I can't explain 16. it. He had no idea why he wasn't playing to the level that we know that he's capable of and the level that we have seen from him earlier in the week. 82. West should require 147. So, 147 for Newton to get us back, Leo. He's got six from this juncture. And I just wonder where he's going to play with the mantra 57. of nothing to lose. But Shane Jenkins... When you look at the stats and you look at what the odds compilers are saying, they expect them two to get through. There, there's a freedom about the way Nicholson 16. and Newton can go about their West business this evening. 19. I know a few of you may be tuning in having watched the end of the action in Gibraltar on the Euro Tour. Well, we do have 10 games to bring you this evening. Newton there was trying to find another 25 82. to tee up tops, but instead settles for... Double four. Pretty rare that you'll have seen potentially two darts thrown at double in an evening. 100. And the highest check out would have been 12. Eight. But that could be the case here as Newton aims yeah, for D4. And that's and that's exactly what we have. Where's Newton? Well, it's interesting because if you actually take out the three blockbusters from Richie Hansen last night, the Third top like check out from Richie the other four players in the group was 109. I don't know if you were watching last week. I'm sure you were, Henry. Yanis Mustafaev's mm. only had one dart at double one on in one of his matches. He hit it, and it was at double one. Now, that is something great. Right. Hit a 180 to leave it. 96. That was like one of my friendly matches on Tuesday night. But it, I get where you're coming from with the point is sometimes op opportunities just come and go and they can come One quite rarely at times. Forty. I'm going to show you a, a little quirk of Richie Houghton here as he retrieves these darts. It's almost like a, a reverse moonwalk that he does, sliding along the hockey as if he's on some kind of 16. hoverboard. There you see, look, a little turn from Richie Housen. Strictly come darting, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow night. 16. What's that film where... Oh, I can't remember the film. Uh, you know, the guy slides across the room in that... Not Love Actually, is it? No, not Love Actually. Um... One hundred and twenty-two. I don't know why you're looking at me, Henry. I can't get inside the contents of your head. Ninety-eight. Richie, you require fifty-six. Are we going to see the house and shuffle at the end of this one? When Marco Myra's called. Yes, that's game yeah, short. That's game short than a bird like Richie Houston. Yeah, that is game short. And Houston's halfway there towards the finishing line, towards finals night. So much style Forward on the stage right now, isn't there? That little first. stylish Came on. call from the referee. And actually, if you clip that up right, social media people, you might have seen just at the exact moment, Houston was doing his half turn 
Marco Meyer went, yeah. <laughs> He's halfway through the match. Halfway to finals One night. And getting night. closer and closer and closer. He might be darty dancing tomorrow night at finals night. 100. Well, he has had the year of his life as well so far in 2022. Did really well on the senior circuit. Semi-finalists at the Lakeside. And now he's looking to do a little bit more here at the Super Series. He went four darts into the nine. 100. One from your repertoire, Murph. What, darty dancing? No, I, I quite like that, Henry. That was... Uh, I meant the film, but... <laughs> right on my street. I watched that for the first time about two months ago. One hundred. One, two, one for Houston to edge. One hundred. Richie, you require ever closer. Hoping to catch a few words from Richie at the end of this match if he does win. 96. And he West probably will get another opportunity to win this leg. He won't be doing the darting deja vu shot. The 1-2-1 one, one was taken out around this time yesterday, wasn't it, from Richie House? And backed 16. up with a 1-6-1 one, one in his opening Richie encounter. Richie required 25. But a 25 will do just the same to put him one away. And then he'd have the throw to progress through to finals night. 17. But there's still work Let's to do. 93. May go bull, may go treble 19. Choices for Wes Newton. Amazing. Players never ever go double double 53. on 74, do they? Which you require eight. The only, I think, the couple of players I've seen do it are the top players, Van Gerwen and Wright. Don't mind a double 17 and a double top. Yeah, that's game short in the fourth lad. Richie Housen. Now. Do you think the psychology of it is that the top players would perhaps Fifth trust their courage and conviction? It's more a confidence thing than it is actually a board management thing. Um, possibly. I just think it's a it's a strange one, isn't it? Because you see it nearly all the time on 76, nearly all the time on 72, hardly ever on 74 and 78. One I think it is about thinking awkward doubles two. that they don't like. But the top players just think they're all the same size. One on the name, and you've got a better chance. That's the thing, isn't it? Despite whether you like the double or not, mathematics says that you're more likely to hit a double than you are a treble. 85. Richie Houston almost home here. A 180 to open when he needs this leg for the match. And Wes Newton. 80. And he's going to have to be pretty strong from here on in and he's playing to type here house and yesterday his average for the day was 87.87 as you can see there is 88.74 if anything he's getting better as time went on he got three maximums yesterday in the entirety of the session he's got two here today now people are wondering whether richie house could be caught well he's getting better it seems on the evidence of this first game of the evening and he's 138 points 59. away from ceiling richie progression before we've even hit 20 past 10. Yeah, it was a 4-3 win, remember, that first match against Tony O'Shea last night. A real battle, but it set him off on his way. And he's never looked back since then, Richie Housen. 94. So Housen is 44 points away from that fourth leg in that tenth point. 100. Which will see him Richie, you require 44. through. We'll see him there. We'll see him rubber stamp his ticket. To tomorrow night's darty party. Game. And the owl Short will return for Saturday Richie night Houghton. to the Super Series. He has qualified for tomorrow night's final, courtesy of that 4-1 success against Wes Newton. He is invincible at the minute he's unbeatable in Group B. It is victory for Housen by four legs to one. Our next game is also crucial in securing 
two of the other positions through to tomorrow night's red carpet occasion. It's Tony O'Shea up against Andy Jenkins after this short break. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Richie Housen has just booked his place in finals night with that 4-1 victory, making it five wins from five in Group B. And he is speaking to Phil Bars right now. Let's hand over to them. Thank you very much, Abby. And here we are and we've got the hour, Richie Housen. First of all, congratulations, a 4-1 win. How are you feeling after that one? Uh, fantastic, Phil. Yeah, really over the moon to get that first one out of the way. Um, I see what happened today and, and it could be just so easy to lose as many as you win. So I'm really pleased to get that one under my belt. More importantly, I can tell you, you are going to finals night tomorrow as well. How does that make so, you feel? Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, I'm, I'm over the moon now. Yeah, pressure's off now so I can just go and enjoy myself and oh, great, brilliant. We were chatting before we came back and you said in the practice room you weren't hitting anything. No, no, it was it was just not going anywhere. So I was, I, I, where's was it? And so I'm thinking I've just got to go out there and try and grind a, a win out. Uh, luckily, I got it under my belt, so I'm good. You told us yesterday you were just a pub player <laughs> earning a little bit of a living, but you're doing more than that now. We've seen you produce <laughs> it on TV at the Seniors and now on TV here at the Super Series. Yeah, it's, it's, going, it's going great. Life's good. I'm enjoying my darts. Um, yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. Enjoying them. Don't put no pressure on yourself. There we have Richie Housen there after match one, and it's back to you, Abby, on the balcony. 
Yeah, thanks very much for that. The pressure certainly off Richie Housen, but it is very much on for our next opponents. Tony O'Shea against Andy Jenkins. It's second against third in the table. Let's get this one underway. Thanks, Abby. Yeah, looking forward to another darting ding-dong and another significant one as well. Two players that are tied on four points. Still some distance behind the now qualified Richie Housen through to finals night. He's made it four. It's going to be a little wild before we see who five and six are. But one of this pair can put a, a big gap between not necessarily themselves and the other player in this match, but the bottom two, Paul Nicholson and Wes Newton, who's now on two points after five matches. They can dip a toe into tomorrow night's final. They won't be there by any stretch of the imagination, but they give themselves the best possible chance of doing so. That is for certain. It'll open up that four-point buffer. With only a handful of games left to play. It was really good to hear from Richie Housen there talking to Phil Bars following the conclusion of that game, which saw him qualify through to tomorrow night's final. And he is one of those First characters right, and one of those players that is just Game happy on. every single opportunity he gets. And he's just out there just to showcase who he is. And, and he hopes that the success follows that. Yeah, absolutely. You're right, what you said in the first match. So he's having the year of his life, and it's a strange kind of scenario that he's doing it when he's kind of retired playing on the seniors tour, and, and it's brought out a completely new lease of life in Richie Housen. Now, these are two players that have played on that as well. Now, Andy Jenkins, of course, still competitive on the Challenge 66. Tour. Tony O'Shea still competitive on the WDF circuit, so... You know, different stages of career. But in terms of this tournament, massively 16. important, I think, for Andy Jenkins to make sure he's here tomorrow night. Based on where we are. You know, he lives in Portsmouth. He's well known in these parts. He's already got his friends to head to dartshop.tv and book their tickets for tomorrow, which you can do as well, free of charge. Don't forget. And that brings its own pressure. Indeed, and... Living in, in ports of myself, and I've, I've been trying to spread the word around the city. If you want to sell sell tickets around this local area, you name the name Andy Jenkins. He's a legend around 14. these parts. Funnily enough, and this is a true story, I was in a in a taxi about a week or so ago, uh, coming back from here after a, a morning session, and we were talking about you know what the building was about and things like that, and we we're saying it was, it was a darts tournament, and. I was, you know, and the taxi driver asked who was playing in it. And I said, Look, people like Andy Jenkins and things like that. Click straight away. I know, all these people. Andy Jenkins knows everyone in Portsmouth. And so for the tournament, yes, it'd be for the crowd, it would help. And it's like, it's like you know, when we have Jerry events in Germany on the Euro Tour. If you have a Max Hopp or Martin Schindler or Gabriel Clements through to the finals, then the crowd will be there but they have to be there on merit that's the important thing you have to do it by being good enough yeah well the pressure may be piled on jenkins from the off here because tony is down to tony top 40. in a, a slow start to the match it has to be said just one three figure return each in this opening yeah, that's leg game than the first leg. Tony it's an opening leg that is won by silverback and a puzzled look on the face of andy jenkins did have a chat with him yesterday Second about market, Andy to throw first. Game those on. new flights that he was using. He said they've been going really well for him in local tournaments, but didn't happen on the stage last night. And it's just something that was in his head. He's still One getting used to them. Like a new pair of shoes, but he appears to be treading them in quite nicely now. He's found the targets all right. Well, it's like it's a magnet now. One of them, 40. That's unlucky. He's actually clipped one of the first two darts and deflected out the other side. Well, he said he was struggling to find the troubles bed yesterday. Now he can't miss it. Yeah, good response to a, 40. a slow first leg. Rocky now racing through the second. Five perfect darts. One of them, 30. But we thought out of the five players, if anyone could go through the gears tonight, it was probably Andy. Based on what we've seen in 2022, and the, the Challenge 51. Tour, and in other events, especially here, he has found this mojo to his game. Two eights. 
Yeah, that's Chalele and Wallace up. The leg. They want a piece. Yeah, well, he was favourite to win the group, wasn't he, Andy Jenkins, before a dart was thrown. And you can see in that Third leg, like it's Tony to throw first. part of the reason why. Dream on. So just to remind you what's happened this week, folks, here at the Super Series, if you are tuning in for the first time on this Friday night after a hard week at work, 16. kicking back, enjoying the action, well, Mark Dubridge made it through winning Group A earlier in the week. He actually finished tied on points at the top of the table with Tony O'Shea, who fell into Group B with Wes Newton just behind them. And remarkably, Chris Mason finished fourth despite throwing a superior standard of darts statistically than any 66. of the other players in the group. Now, he went into Group C with Gary Robson and John Walton, and Mason made it, topping that group after win winning all of his matches yesterday. One of 40. But struggled, didn't he, in the early part of this morning and managed to kind of fall over the line in the end, joined by Gary Robson at 96. finals night. And as you've seen tonight, Richie Housen is now there after a 4-1 win against Wes Newton because he won all of his matches last night. Well, I had a chat with One of Chris 14. after the session finished this afternoon and he just said about how much physically this tournament takes out of you. Mentally, it takes a lot 21. out, but he said the struggle was, was with the arm because it's such a, the same thing over a repetitive strain over so long. Now, with the early morning starts and things like that, one it of was own getting the body to do things that perhaps it didn't want to do. It wasn't comfortable doing because it was tired. Nice move here from Andy Jenkins. He's just carried on where he left off in the previous leg. A hat trick of ton 40s. He's got him down to tops after 12. And this is to break O'Shea. Double 10. Twenty. Well, better to miss there than inside. Doesn't want to get into a little bit of a, a tangled web here. Andy Jenkins. So she will be looking to half the score. 60. Can't manage it. And you require 20. And so for the break of throw. Are you getting closer, Jenks? But not no close score. enough. And so can Tony O'Shea Tony light up the blue touch paper for him tonight with a 140 out. Well, his reaction suggests that he thinks he's not close enough to Andy Jenkins in the leg, and he's right. But after some really powerful scoring Andy from Andy 20. Jenkins, he's now missed six darts a double to win this leg, and the tally is rising and rising. Yeah, that's good. But he does sure win the leg in the end. Andy Jenkins. But he had nine darts after a. A 40-something score in his opening visit where he scored like it's Andy to throw first. 140, 140, 140, 140. And then it took him nine darts to hit the remaining 40. Well, I want to tell you a tale of two 97. components of this match right here. The first one is the scoring phase here. Completely outscoring OJ. 4140 plus. He's actually got more in the 140 plus slash 180 column than he's got in the ton plus column. The scoring isn't an issue. But it's when it comes to here, the checkouts, two from 11. And if O'Shea is going to harbour some hope, it is the fact that Jenkins, yes, is scoring well. But when it comes to the finishing, he has been found wanting. Yeah, and that was a, a strength of his game last night, Andy Jenkins. In comparison to the rest of the field, we saw some dreadful doubling. It has to be said, Richie Housen was more than 50% checkouts. That is 93. astonishing. You know, that is top draw by any standard in this sport. Andy Jenkins himself was around a third, but everybody else, less than 23%. Tony O'Shea around that mark. So, yes, he'll be buoyed by the fact that Jenkins is missing opportunities, but he's going to have to tighten up on what he did last night. Well, the story of last night, for O'Shea was actually the opposite. Scoring-wise, he was actually and okay. But it was 22% on the doubles, which was the reason why he came out of yesterday evening with a split roster. 97. Forty, and you require 17.
Double 16 for 3-1. 38. Does get an opportunity, Tony O'Shea, but as Henry just alluded to, the scoring hasn't been there, so the chances are outside chances. Treble 20. And the ball! Yeah, In the ball from the Tony ball, O'Shea. Man. What Tony a finish O'Shea. that is. Absolutely superb. And Andy Jenkins turned away, Fifth shook flag, his head. He could not first. believe what he just Game witnessed. Man. He's still in disbelief here, Rocky, who's just taken a bit of a heavy blow. It's a shame you won't see the overhead cam on the bullseye as Tony O'Shea fires in a 140. It actually is first of the match. But if you actually look at the first dart that went into the board on the 25, it actually made the bullseye bed bigger because the flight was blocking the way of the bottom part of the 20 bed. And so it actually gave him a nicer lie when it came back down to the bullseye. Well, suddenly he's found it. 135 One finish. On and back to back 140s, Tony O'Shea. Something has sparked in Silverback. Rocky rallying. One on the own 40. But we've got a game on our hands. Now, these are the averages now. And he's been about that for the whole game. O'Shea's brought it up by about eight points and even more. On That's unlucky. 20. O'Shea's clicked into gear. He's found the spark. He's awake on Friday night. 81. Tony, you require 101. 101 then to turn it around. Treble 19. Treble 14 would leave him double 16 for when he comes back. 69. That's nicely executed by O'Shea. Good rescue with the final dart. And Andy Jenkins, well, 50. he'll be Tony wondering what's happened 32. in this little two-minute spell by O'Shea. Yeah, that's game short. And again, another line. nice Tony mark of Tony O'Shea. And suddenly, from a position of authority, Andy Jenkins finds him back firmly against the Six wall. He's going to win the lot Andy here to first. get the better of O'Shea Come in this on. crucial battle for the top three. Again, the look on his face said it all. Picture can paint a thousand words. And Andy Jenkins has left us in no doubt as to what he's feeling right now. But why he is 45. where he is. A big part of it that I know he did get over the line in the leg where he missed most of those darts, but he missed one, didn't he? One double before Tony O'Shea took out the one three five. And since then Silverback has not looked back. He's looking firmly forward. Eighty one. His eyes is on the prize. And I mentioned yesterday, didn't I, about Tony. When you look back at his career and some of the biggest results he's got during that time they all come in scraps he is not afraid to do whatever he needs to do to get a result 28. it's an admirable trait to have as a professional darts player or sports person of any mantra now andy would be perhaps advised to go down for the 19s moves across the 17 to leave 164 and single 19 will left 166, so a bogey number. 100, and you require 164. Is that in? I don't 100. think it is. No, it wasn't, because the last one snuck in just above, as you can see on our overhead camera shot. Well, Tony would like to leave something here. 59. He's not going to. Having taken out 135, leaving anything would have been enough to just ruffle the feathers yeah, of Andy Jenkins, who takes care star. of business in leg six, holds his throw, but O'Shea has the darts in the decider. Seven ten, you said it's Tony to throw first. Game on. That this leg is not indicative of where they're going to be tonight at the end of play, but it'll be indicative possibly on who's going to make the march first. Yeah, I don't think defeat well, really then, damages either player. No. They're still going to be in the top three, aren't they? But a victory really, really does strengthen the winner's prospects of qualifying. Well, then, 25. I'm going to put you on the spot here, Murph. Housen's through on 10. What do you think the figure's going to be for positions two and three to get through? It's a difficult question because 25. if Wes Newton and Paul Nicholson play like they did for most of last night, then it's hard to see where wins are coming from 
for that pair they play next. So uh, maybe it's a question that I will delay answering until till after that one. Five. But possibly it's conceivable that six points could be enough. I think eight probably will be enough. We'll find out as the evening goes on. We're into a final leg decider here in this battle between O'Shea and Jenkins. The winner will get on to six points. We'll go outright second. As you then see our final players, well, the final player after the first round of fixtures. One on the own 40. Paul Nicholson in action against Wes Newton. Jenkins leaving one for one after nine in the decider against the darts. And for all the hard work Tony O'Shea has done to get himself back in the game, you feel as if he's undone it in this deciding leg. Yeah, his spells have been short-lived, haven't they, this week? And sometimes they've come at the right times. He kept him in this match or even got him into this match, Tony O'Shea. But he hasn't been able to elongate the excellence and give himself a shot at winning the match. Unless Andy Jenkins does something like the Rocky Horror Show that he produced earlier on, one on their own 40. And misses loads of darts and double 48. here. Double 16. 16. Well, it is a couple of missed darts. And when he did miss that target earlier, Tony, Tony O'Shea popped the 135. Can he pop the 130 to steal the success? Well, you can see exactly what Jenks is thinking at the back of the stage. This is still on. Would have left the ball if he could have got the treble. So Jenkins will return for 32 to seal a crucial two points. Just trying to settle himself down here, Andy Jenkins. Game. Shot. He's done the trick. The match. Andy Jenkins. Well played, mate, says Tony O'Shea. The pair know that neither of them are out of the running. In fact, they're both still favourites to join Richie Houston in qualifying. But Andy Jenkins has really tightened his grip on a place at finals night tomorrow. A 4-3 success. It was hard fought in the end. Maybe even harder fought than it needed to be for Rocky. But he'll be happy with that victory. However it came, a 4-3 win. Two points on the board to move above O'Shea into second place with the bottom two, Paul Nicholson and Wes Newton about to do battle after the break.
Welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth where Andy Jenkins has just come through in a last leg decider to get the better of Tony O'Shea. Jenkins was favourite to win Group B before a dart was thrown. He may not top the group, but he is looking good for a place in finals night after that victory. He had the second best finishing percentage of the opening night of action. He did miss 12 at the outer ring in that one, but still got over the line. That 135 from Tony O'Shea did look like it was going to turn the tide in that match match but in the last leg decider too many trebleless visits from O'Shea it gave Jenkins the upper hand and he was able to get over the line in that one a really crucial win in terms of the league standings for him we can see confirmation of that he moves on to six points in the table of course Richie Housen already through two finals night and it is looking like Andy Jenkins will join him Tony O'Shea of course in a very handy position himself as well but next Next, we turn our attentions to Wes Newton against Paul Nicholson. Nico's one victory yesterday coming against Tony O'Shea after a bit of double trouble in that final leg. Nico pinning double three to get over the line. In this match yesterday, it was Wes Newton who was the 4-2 victor in this one. Of course, that was Wes's only victory on the opening night in Group B. Who will come out on top in this one then? Let's hand back over to our commentary team. Thank you very much, Abby. And you sense this is a crucial game for the pair. The victor here will give themselves the opportunity, the launch pad to get themselves towards the top three. The loser will have a lot of work to do. The loser, you sense, may see their chances evaporate very, very quickly. Paul Nicholson, former major champion, but he has been on the wrong side of many, many defeats to... A darting nemesis in Newton, who is looking to inflict one like he did yesterday. His only win came against Nico, a 4-2 success. It was a, a bit of a, a poor affair, really, between the pair of them. The worst match, I think, of the evening in terms of standard. Wes Newton then first. produced something Game much, on. much better. In fact, in defeat to Richie House and just one match later, Wes Newton averaged 25 points more 55. but lost the game. He did, in that game, only get three darts at double, however, which is a big reason why, because he missed 12 in victory against Paul Nicholson, who missed 16 in this fixture yesterday. Now, we speak a lot, Murph, about the so-called flip matches that flip their way over from the last game of one player's session to the first game of another. This is Paul Nicholson's flip match. Mm, Newton, of course, played against Housen earlier on this evening. We say psychologically they're big battles. So how tough is it going to be if that big battle is against a player that, over the years, his record isn't too good against? Oh, massive. And there have been real 59. significant defeats for Paul Nicholson against Wes Newton. Defeats that might have stopped him, for example, getting selected for the Premier League. You think about that 2012 run 44. when he could have been in the quarterfinals of the match play, when he could have been in the semi-finals of the World Grand Prix. You think about the Euro Tour that he could have won. And every single time, 16. it's been Wes Newton that has been walking off with the extra bit of cash in his pocket and taking the food off Paul's table. 59. I think there are some things that Paul Nicholson wants to achieve tonight, and I think that one of them is, of course, trying to sneak through two finals night. The first is hitting a 180, because he hasn't managed that yet. 121. But there are... Yeah, I think he wants to leave here with the feeling of earning the right to hold his head high because he 61. won't be happy with how he played last night. Make no mistake about that. So many bounce outs Wes Newton gets. We spoke about this yesterday. His darts, they kind of land almost sideways. The point of the board is not fully penetrating dead centre. And it just means that the slightest 59. thing, the clip of a wire, the clip of another dart, can, can send it away from penetrating at all. It's like being in a car without a seatbelt. It's just never going to be comfortable. And it can and you can jolt oh, one way or another. 44. Based on 
the positioning of the dart in the board. Nicholson here wants 144. This would be his highest checkout of the week if it went. And 83 yesterday was his highest out. And if Newton took out the 86, it'd be his highest out of the week. Neither player actually had a ton plus so far in this particular group. Yeah, Wes Newton had no combinations like this. 58, the biggest he hit. Yeah, but he gets that one. And of course he West does, Newton. because he's playing Paul Nicholson. And everything he wants against this man, he hits. And Nicholson knows it. Second leg is Paul the throw first. Was Paul Nicholson Green. watching Mark Layton earlier? Touch of the fist bumps after the first leg. Yeah, he's Mr. Nice Guy, isn't he? Paul Nicholson these days. The bad boy persona is so 2011. Yeah, it deserves to be in the realms of nostalgia of the early 2010s alongside Black Breeze, Carly Rae Jepsen, 59. And things like that. Sixteen. That's double shift of the week, but we will be back tomorrow, of course, with the most important shift of the week. And see who shifts themselves through to Champions Week next week. Do be tuning in every chance you get over the course of the six days of action at the Super Series live on Sporty Stuff TV from 9.30 a.m. on Monday because it is... 100. 12 tungsten tossers from the first stage of Super Series action that will be fighting out for their share of a, a prize fund of more than £40,000. 26. 20000 to the winner. And that could really... I mean, it could pay for someone's season, couldn't it, in, in whatever route they follow. It's career-changing. It really is career-changing money. I mean, think about the tournaments we've had 100. in amateur darts over the years. That's had that prize fund. If you take out the Lakeside World Championships, maybe the odd World Martyrs that had a good prize pot, there's not many events. This is huge for the amateur game. Make no mistake about it. Nicholson wants 146 here. We'll go two trouble 19s to guarantee, guarantee him a dart. It would have if he got it to double 16. But he's upstairs, he goes at this particular juncture. And the good news is for those. First three days of Champions Week, it's going to be me and you in the commentary box, Murph. Can't wait. 92. Boy, you require 52. Imagine I'll go for a 20 here, Paul Nicholson. He's a very much a double 16 merchant. Yeah, that's game short than a second line. And he'll Paul be very Nicholson. relieved to get it because he would have fancied Wes for the 1 2 9. More pleasantries exchanged between Bird the pair. Of them. I think partly because they both know that they've not been playing well and, and they're almost trying to lift each other a, li a little bit in order to lift themselves. It's a bit like if you go for a 30. round of golf and you know you've got a bit of a bandit handicap and you're 3, 4, 5, 6 putting it and by the time you actually. Get the ball in and you move to the next hole. You actually just tap each other and say, well, that's what it is. Let's move on to the one next one. Eh? Good putt, chap. So this is the action of Wiz Newton. As you can see, 59. a real pronounced lean to the right as he releases the dart. And because of the pronounced lean and the way that he releases, it's very cheesy like in the fact that it can jerk a little bit as it's released towards the board. It means you're never going 57. to have a comfortable entry into the board with any dart. One on the own 40. Nice for Nicholson. Very much an old school style in the fact that he brings it up to eye level. Pulls it back. Of course he switches so we can't see the shot anymore. But 58. he brings it up to about eye level pulls it back and fires. And it was, if you watch a, a, a video of John Lowe, it's on YouTube somewhere from back in 95. the 70s. And it, it's a video about a, a player who picks a dart up for the first time. What, what would be the correct action? And he said, bring it up, pull it back, bring it up to about eye level, pull it back and fire. 
84. Yeah, it's a kind of coachable action, isn't it, that Nicholson has, and it makes every bit of sense because, of course, he does do a little bit of coaching, the asset. 25. And there's another one of those darts coming out for Wes Newton. He does leave himself on a finish, which Nicholson didn't manage with his misfire. But he's bidding to break here, Paul Nicholson. 18. Where should he go? You know what? I think maybe going for the bullseye was a better choice there for Nicholson. Just give himself that, that little marginal advantage. Had he done that and hit himself a 25, he'd be on a finish, which would guarantee a dart at the outer ring. Now he has to hit the bull or 25 to make sure he gets that. 100. Ball you require 82. Because if he doesn't take this out, Newton should get two darts at double for a 2-1 lead. Only going to be the ball, isn't it? Another 16. And that's why you have to think further out. 57. Where should you require 52? Bit of luck for Paul Nicholson. But that doesn't matter, Wes. The second miss doesn't matter. He can't feel too settled, having missed two big numbers, but he gets the yeah, important bit done in the in end. The Wes, Newton Wes Newton wins the leg. Paul Nicholson, well, he's just laughing about it because he knows that, you know, whatever Wes Newton does, even when he's pass. absolutely yeah. rubbish, he still finds a way to win legs against Paul Nicholson. He's frustrated, isn't he, Wes Newton? Look at him. Not happy with how he's playing at all. 100. Starting voodoos here at the Super Series. And of course, you can get in contact with us via our social media channels. We are at MSS Darts on Facebook, Twitter, and, and Instagram. And you can subscribe to our Moda Super Series YouTube channel every single session live so you don't miss a second of the action with us plus plenty of bonus content, interviews with the players, we'll have Game of the Day, and 45. all sorts of other stuff across the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. So please do stick with us. Basically, you can watch us whenever you want. 28. Yeah, get in you can get in touch with us as well. Henry is 07592. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's your Twitter handle? 45. At H underscore Deacon Media. I think that's one of those ones that you uh, put on your blocking spree, wasn't it? Ah, yes. Well, muted. I didn't know you knew that. <laughs> 41. I'm still looking for that button on here. One hundred and twenty-five. Once again, it's a bit of a muted match between this pair. Wes Newton has... One hundred and forty. Well, this is... difficult to read out, but he's averaging 73, despite not missing a dart double. That tells you a lot. Yeah, our friend and commentary colleague Matthew Edgar's got in touch with us this evening. He said, 44. can't believe Wes Newton has been allowed to play without a shirt on tonight. Unbelievable. 99. Ball, you require 142. You know, I don't know if, it, if I enjoyed working more with Matt and his humour or you and yours, Henry. It's a close run thing. Can certainly nine. see him winning this leg, though, West because Paul Nicholson 94. has hit the nine. Three threes. You don't see that very often. 29. Ball, you require 133. I'll tell you what, if he hit the single three and he got the single five, we'd have back-to-back -back nines. Well, he could hit another three here. Gets away from that one, but he can't hit 133. And Wes Newton... Right, despite everything that he's been doing wrong in this match, will definitely take this 65. out because he's not missing anything when it comes to the end of the leg. Apart from the big numbers sometimes. But the doubles, no trouble. Double 10. 
Door open for Paul Nicholson for once. 76. Can he take the opportunity? He's 33% on the doubles, but that is a trouble. A big trouble one. 13. A big trouble because 36. he almost would have backed him more had he hit a single one and been able to go 25 ball. But anything that can go wrong is going wrong for yeah, Paul Nicholson and Wes Newton, line. despite Wes not Newton. being anywhere near his best or his second best or his third best and so on. He's one leg away flag is West from Throat doubling first. up with victories against a man that he just seems to have that hoodoo over. J just switch, Wes. Just switch. One of them. There you go. Thirty-seven. It makes you laugh because they don't want to switch, but when they actually do, they find the treble. Sixteen. And now it is full advantage to the warrior, who has had to go through the battles here against 58. his old nemesis Nicholson. So next match, Andy Jenkins against Richie Houston. If Jenkins can beat Houston, who has to fulfil his remaining fixtures, despite knowing he's already at finals 41. tonight, how that will affect him mentally, we don't know. It would probably be enough for Jenkins to get through, you would imagine, although nothing would be confirmed at that point. Then Paul Nicholson takes on Tony O'Shea, the only man he beat yesterday before Newton 46. returns to meet Jenkins. So the middle section of the evening, as it often is in Group B, a really important little spell coming up. I don't want to be the balloon burster, but this group could be over by the end of Jenkins-Newton. Potentially. But that's Paul Nicholson's first competitive maximum in two and a half years. Well, it's something to tick off. 95. For Paul Nicholson. He hasn't gone the way he would have hoped. He's not out of the running yet, of course. You've got a much better chance of a late charge in Group B than you would have in Group C. Just ask Alan Norris. 100. And a breaker throw here. Suddenly, Nicholson can annoy Wes almost as much as a bounce outs are annoying him. Even that one's wobbly and he's only staying in because it's met two wires crossing each other. 10. Ball you require 120. A few times, though, we've seen Paul Nicholson on approach to finishers missing the big number now. 88. Good West recovery. 155. Just has to hope that Newton doesn't hit. Nicholson here staring down Paul double 16. He's going to have 32. to take out the double 16 now with Newton poised on tops to seal the victory. Yeah, that's good. No sure mistake from flag. Nicholson. Paul Nicholson. And just interestingly, Paul Nicholson's kind of remained around the average that he's at for the whole Six game. Six like it's Paul the throw first. Game Newton's on. has just dropped a tad. Could that be pivotal in the final throws of this match? 16. The silence must mean you're agreeing with me. Well, I, he was averaging less than 16. he is now at the end of the last leg, so I disagree with you, but never mind. If you're going to push me on it, I'll tell the truth. I meant generally. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but one of the big features is, of course, the fact that the darts are on the floor, a lot of them, aren't they? And if you're only throwing two darts, maybe one dart in some visits, then you're not going to end up with a particularly high average at the end of the game. One on the M40. I might speak to our brilliant statistics department to see whether on top of a free dart average where we can actually have a darts on the floor average from Wes Newton in this match. Yeah, how many times has he actually ended up not 58. being able to score with all three darts? Would be interesting to know. In fact, in the next match, I might take a tally. I reckon last night he could have completed a leg. 97. With the darts that bounced out of the board and the segments they were in. Yeah, fair point. Just 
Well, in fairness, every double did stay in the board. Yeah, but 58. You think he lost maybe somewhere between 15 and 18 darts? Well, we saw the double bounce out yesterday, didn't we? Which cost him 99. 120. You know, we saw something similar from Chris Mason this afternoon as well. Yes. A 105 to win the match. Paul Nicholson trying to apply some pressure. That does not help. Needs a treble now. Nicely done. West you require 105. Excellent rescue act from Paul Nicholson. But has to rely on Newton not cleaning up. He's not going to. 73. I wonder which way Paul, Nicholson will go here. A 16th route has become very popular. He's been an advocate of it. And that was where he went. Forty-four. Where does West he go from here? It was always going to be a more important match for Wes Newton than Paul Nicholson, considering that it's his second of the evening. Nico can still find a way. Can Newton find a way through those? Three. Yes, Short he can. And, and once Newton. again, Wes is the winner. He doesn't look too happy about it. Another dross darting affair played between the pair of them, and they will be the first to admit that. I mean, you can see that they are admitting that on the stage. Nothing spectacular to talk about in the stats there. The one positive is that they got rid of the double trouble that they had yesterday. Missing five darts, Wes Newton, and just a couple, Paul Nicholson, when they missed 28 between them in their affair yesterday. But it was a scoring that disappeared in this one. However, Wes Newton has scored points, and suddenly he's in contention. Level on points with Tony O'Shea. He will take on Nicholson in a couple of games' time, but before that, it is the top two. Andy Jenkins in second against the already qualified Richie Housen coming next.
Good evening and welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Wes Newton has kept his faint chances of qualifying alive with that 4-2 victory over Paul Nicholson. And we can hear what Wes has to say about that win now. Wes, congratulations. It's another victory over Paul Nicholson and you've given yourself a chance here in Group B. Yeah, I've got a chance. It's, uh, it's a two points I win on the board, but um, you know it's so hard up there. It's you know, Paul, like Paul's a bit like myself. He's he's won he's won whatever in, in his career. He's, a, he's an awesome player, and um, we're trying so hard. And in the practice room, we're laughing and joking, and we're smashing it in. And we get on stage, it's going all right. And all of a sudden, game on, and you know we're trying. And um, I don't, I can't know, I can't explain it, but you know, I, I feel good. It's, everything's good. I'm practicing well and uh, getting on syndrome at the minute. But uh, yeah, I'm trying. I'm uh, I'm believing. I'm trying to believe, and I'm I'm, I'm trying. And uh, you know, practice is going well. Just need to flick a switch somehow. You're level on points with Tony O'Shea, so all to play for. And can you take confidence from that? Even though the performance wasn't what you wanted, the points are the important thing. Yeah, it's points on the board, but um, you know, you want the performance as well. You know, you need you need. I think it's. When, when people like me and Paul, and we've done what we've done in our careers, and, and now it's about confidence and belief. If you know what I mean, and, and I think winning breeds that. So um, you need you need you need to win and, and and believe and be confident in yourself. And you go up there and you're really confident because you're practicing well. And then you know, all of a sudden you have a bad leg, and then you're hoping rather than being confident. <laughs> if you know what I mean. But you know it's just the way it is. Um, you know we we'll, we'll try our best, and I'm, I'm hoping. You know, like I said, a, a switch will, will flick in a minute and, you know, something will happen and I, and I can play how I'm playing. Well, congratulations, Wes. Thank you very much. Big two points and back to Abby up on the balcony. Thank you. Yeah, one player who certainly doesn't need to flick any switches at the moment is Richie Housen. He's already through two finals night. He's up next against Andy Jenkins, someone who is also in a very strong position to qualify for finals night. Let's get into this one then and hand back over to our commentary team. Thank you very much, Abby. Great to hear from Wes Newton there. And you just can't keep four bars away for a microphone and an interview, can you? But great to hear from the players as the session goes on here at the Super Series. And you get the sense that this match, for Andy Jenkins, if he wins, would probably see him through and would probably see a race between two players to seal the final spot in the finals. Tony O'Shea and Wes Newton meeting game eight of ten this evening. It can see if it could possibly be done a little bit before that. But for these two, focus is very much at the top end of Group B. First lag, it's Andy to throw first. Game on. Fifty-nine. One hundred. Sixty. Well, it would be interesting to see how Richie House and Tries to maintain the level, knowing he's already through. It's a different dynamic, isn't it? A player that's already out has already not been playing well, but one that's been playing well, he wants to carry on. He wants to complete a complete clean sweep. Take all the points he can into finals night. We saw Peter Jakes last week. You know, he won all of his matches on his last day of the group. He ended up winning all of his matches on finals night as well and it, it was a nine-match winning streak that culminated in victory and sealing that spot at champions week and naturally the adrenaline will not be causing through Housen's body just because of the fact that when 100. you've qualified you just have that sense of relief you know you're going through you know you're going to be at finals night tomorrow night of course that will and that desire to win is going to be there but the rush of the blood the thump of the heart. And you require 142. It's not quite the same feeling when you're not chasing a goal because the goal has been achieved. 28. The goal for Jenkins is the same as Housen to qualify for finals night. 
pole position in the first leg. 114 left for Houston back on 189. But that visit there has just allowed the Owl back into this opener. 99. And you require 114. So Jenkins beats Richie Houston here. And Wes Newton in his next game. He will join him on 10 points. We know he'll be through. It may be that he doesn't need to beat Housen here and could still be through when it comes to 82. getting the better of Wes Newton. Richie, you require 90. We think eight points probably will be enough, but nothing will be confirmed after this match that isn't already. 72 remaining for Housen. 58, and you require 32. Well, that was a, a strange choice from Richie Housen. We'll come back to that in a moment. Let's yeah, see if Jenkins, Jenkins gets over the line. He does. Andy Jenkins. Right. You explain the thinking from Richie Howson because he had 90 Second left there. Second gives Richie to throw first. And did Game not on. go away. That would have left him a guaranteed dart of the ball at the end of it. Did he think Jenkins was incapable of taking out 32? 60. But this is what I mean about the adrenaline not causing for your body. It possibly relaxes the mind and when the mind's relaxed you can sometimes seven. not fully focus on the task and that's not an intentional thing that's just the body's natural reaction to there not being the same intensity needed 100 also a player who's been finishing as well as him might have just thought i fancy this 60 Peacockery from the owl. Yeah, I don't think it was even even any kind of showboating. I think he just thought, well, every finish I'm going for, I'm getting darts at double, so I'm going to go this way. Actually, 100. is he going to decline the bullseye at the end of the shot? I think the smart thing to do is go for it at the start of the shot on 90. 30. Now, what's going to be the route to success in leg two? Housen has the distinct advantage, very much so now after that Tom Ford leave himself on 101, with Jenkins all the way back on 314. 81. Richie, you require 101. So 101 for Housen to level us up at one apiece. Trouble 19 or trouble 15. So 71 remain. Trouble 13. Would have been the route for double 16. Just calls here for Andy Jenkins to be optimistic. One and he comes knock, knock, knocking on the door. Richie, require and he ruffled the owl's feathers with that maximum. First starts a double incoming for a man who's been yeah, superb been in that department. And Hudson. no sign of it stopping. The 180 in vain for Jenkins, the match level at one apiece. Third lag, it's Andy to throw first. Game on. And of course, Richie's through. But what he can do, he can ruin everybody else's evening. If he so wants. Very interesting hearing from Wes Newton that it was more than a post-match interview that he delivered, wasn't it? One on the end, 14. Talking about that. The mindset really being here, playing on this tour, knowing that the glory days are 85. a long way away, maybe a long way behind, maybe a long way in front, but that winning feeling is what all the players are looking for to spark a rejuvenation in their careers, particularly those who've had it more often than most. 60. And I think we're going to see something over the next couple of years within the sport. With people like Newton, people like Nicholson, who's had success in the past, 95. but they've had it young, and now they're in their 40s and looking to rediscover it. They haven't got the avenue of the seniors to try and find something again. They're going to have to do it via the Super Series. They're going to have to find it 58. by going to WDF, by going to ADC. They're going to have to do it the, the traditional way. Yeah, and the, one of the good things about this sport, of course, is that age is absolutely no barrier. As Andy Jenkins produces a, a stunning setup shot there. The current world number one and world champion. 
is of age to play on the seniors tour. And you require 16. Peter Wright. Can Jenkins get this right? 12. He gets it wrong Richie and nothing is safe. House and in finishing range. He got a 1-4-6 to change the game against Jenkins yesterday. But he will not change this particular match in this particular leg of a 1-4-3. 59, and you require four. Two's never and lose. Team short and, a third line. and Andy Jenkins, Andy Jenkins. is himself now edging closer to being back here at the Portsmouth party tomorrow. Forward like is Richie to throw first. Game on. He'll be well supported if he does make it through Andy Jenkins. I was going to say, it'd be a pompy darty party, but Andy Jenkins probably would have sent out half of the invites to half of the city. Yeah, Andy Jenkins, a real big figure in darts in this area. 58. Of course, was cheered on to the semi-finals of the World Championship at the turn of the millennium a few years after that. And in front of the big crowds is the chant of play up Rocky. 100. No surprises where that comes from. I just need to get Co Stompy an invite and then it'll be really in full swing, won't One it? On the name, Rocky and Stompy and Pompey. We still leave a finish here, but not now. Now Jenkins should start downstairs 36. here. Ninety six. Fifty-eight. And I feel like we're at a pivotal point where these two are just exchanging mid-range scores. Just stopped himself in his tracks there, Andy Jenkins. One eight two remaining. Eighteen is the, the safest route. Oh, 26. but he went the right way, but got the wrong result. least for once this week the thinking was okay look at him behind andy jenkins 60. really annoyed with himself but he's still in a good position here 130. certainly now Richie, house and may need a, a thompson end. tide turner akin to what he produced last night against this opponent and it might well be coming Oh, this would be a real case of darting deja vu. One on the end, 20. But this time he can't complete the 140-something combo. And Andy Jenkins can steal a march. It'd be for a break of throw. Yeah, it would be for 3-1. Like and it's see him a leg away from eight points. It put him in a commanding position. Fifth leg, it's Andy to throw first. Game it would on. put his opponents on the rope. One on the round, 14. And that is a more than proficient start. Yeah, it's going to be joy for Jenkins here, and he's almost there. 96. Eighty-five. Where's Newton and Tony O'Shea? Both have to play each other. But Tony O'Shea and Paul Nicholson both have three games left, remember, not just two. One on the round, 40. 1 on the round, 40. 40. And Jenkins will put four points between himself and the next nearest player, O'Shea. 97. It would and mean that... require 136. Wes, he could only go level on points, or Wes Newt could only go level on points with Jenkins. The maximum he can get from here is 8 if he wins all 18. of his particular matches. O'Shea can get to 10. Yeah, both of those things couldn't happen, could they? So we could get a situation where three players are on 8 points 100. and we're looking at leg difference. And you require 56. So Jenkins... Would need a bit of a mathematical 
disaster against him here. Game. He's Short as good match. as through. One foot in finals night for Andy Jenkins after a 4-1 win against the already qualified Richie House and the table topper, toppled for the first time in Group B at the Super Series. And Andy Jenkins was good value for the win and averaged just a shade under 90, 50% checkout success. And it all augurs well for Andy Jenkins to be playing in front of a home crowd in Portsmouth at finals night tomorrow. He will confirm it if he wins in the next match. But one, the one that we'll have after the break, features Paul Nicholson and Tony O'Shea trying to stay in close contention. Welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth where Andy Jenkins has just condemned Richie House into his first defeat in Group B. There you can see confirmation, an average just shy of 90 in that one for Jenkins. We wondered how Housen would perform in that one, given the fact that he didn't need to show that same intensity level. It wasn't poor by any means, but not quite able to convert the big three-figure combos in that one. Just two darts at double in the match. Jenkins kept his focus, a solid performance from him to put 
one foot in finals night. A win against Wes Newton in his next match would confirm his place in finals night. We can have a look at the league table at this point in the night confirmation. Housen is already through. Jenkins in a very strong position to join him. Next up then, it's the man in third position in the table, Tony O'Shea, up against Paul Nicholson. Nico's one win yesterday did come in this fixture, but here's Tony O'Shea in his opening match of the evening. He did, of course, lose that one, but he took out this big 1-3-5 in the match. It looked like it was going to be a tied turner in that one, but it didn't prove to be the case as he went down to Andy Jenkins in that match. Right then, let's get into this one and hand back over to our commentary team. Thank you very much, Abby. Paul Nicholson's only win so far in the Super Series came in this fixture yesterday against the Silverback, Tony O'Shea. And me and Chris have been jotting down on paper during the break between matches. And a win here for Nicholson, twinned with a win for Jenkins in the next match. We could have a scenario where Jenkins is through on 10 points, but the final spot will be between three players on exactly the same number of points. Yeah, and it would be an interesting end to the evening if that were to play out, though Paul Nicholson, you feel that it, this is must win for him because he needs to keep Tony O'Shea where he is. And it's the only time that he's playing either of the rivals for that third spot because he's still got Houghton and Jenkins to play and that is going to be no easy task, is it? Now, Tony O'Shea did lose to Paul Nicholson last night, the only win that Nicholson's got so far. First like it's pull the throw first, game on. That's Randy Jenkins, who has just beaten Richie House, and I know a few of you may be watching with interest to see what he needs to do. Well, all will be certain after this game. He'll know exactly what he needs to do. We know that a win, of course, against Wes One Newton in the next 40. match is enough to see Andy Jenkins through. If Paul Nicholson loses this game to Tony O'Shea, then he'll need just two legs in his next match, Andy Jenkins, against Wes Newton. 100. Newton, despite being better off on points, has the worst leg difference in the group, minus nine. Paul Nicholson, minus four. Tony O'Shea, bang on the button. And Jenkins 26. and Housen in positive territory, of course, with very good records so far in this group. One hundred. And it is that point of Friday night where we are crunching the numbers and sorting out all the equations that are indeed possible here at the Super Series. And tonight there is a number of them. Fifty-nine. Yeah, however, it might all be settled pretty quickly, might it? If O'Shea wins this, he moves on to six. If Newton then loses to Jenkins and One it goes to 40. kind of league position then he stays on four and Tony O'Shea will have a double chance because he can beat Newton and eliminate him in game eight. But even if he doesn't, he'll know that he's got a chance against an already 16. qualified Richie House in Uri game Grau, 10. 161. Tony O'Shea, whatever happens, looks like he's going to be in the running for the rest of the evening at the very 16. least. Paul Nicholson could soon find himself Pretty much out of it. Just one game left to play. One hundred. Tony, you require one hundred and one. Sorry, two games left to play for Paul Nicholson after this, but against the top two. Really, forty-nine needs to Paul, get a win you require here. One hundred and sixteen. One hundred and sixteen start would be helpful. Gets a go at double 18. 98. Tony, you require 52. Well, Shea had troubles on the doubles against Nicholson yesterday. Yeah, that's good. But those woes won't go on on Friday. And O'Shea leads Nicholson by a leg to nil here. In this pivotal game for Same both in terms of how their nights are going to pan out. Yeah, certainly for Paul. 
maybe more than Tony. 41. 41. A breaker throw in the opening leg as well. And looking to put right a poor visit here. 61. Thirty-six. One on the end, forty. Sixty. One other than 36. Tony O'Shea, handsome win would put him in a very strong position. I just think Paul Nicholson's turned up tonight and it's been a little bit flat, 60. to be honest. Tony, really did want to see a little bit of that bit between his teeth, but almost an air of resignation about the performances of Paul. 91. We've seen what this week has done for Chris Mason. It's opened a door. He's already now been given an invitation to the World Seniors and will be a contender there. May even be a contender at Champions Week here next week. But 58. I think we have Tony to look at it the other way and 32. think, you know, what does this teach Paul Nicholson about himself and about his future prospects? No score. Because this can go one way or the other. We've seen the spark for Chris Mason, but... If you struggle here, you're going back down that darting well. And the reason why they took that step back was because they didn't want to carry on being there. But one of the things you have to say is that you can't expect to be at your best if you're not playing. Absolutely agreed. 18. It's only you require 32. And maybe Paul hasn't played enough. 16. Well, hasn't left to finish after six visits in this leg, Paul Nicholson. 96. Of course, that doesn't mean anything Tony if Tony O'Shea 16. keeps on missing. Six starts squandered at the double already. Yeah, it has but that run comes to an player. end and O'Shea doubles Tony his O'Shea. lead and it's all looking rosy for Tony O'Shea right now. Third leg, it's ball the throw first. Game on. You can spend all evening, Henry, calculating permutations and possibilities, but it's starting to look like that the three that started the evening in the top three positions will finish the evening there. Not to say I told you so. 100. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. Three times when the clocks go back. 100. Paul Nicholson will be wishing he could turn 45. the clocks back. I hate to say this, but I'm going to. If he could turn the clocks back, do you think he'd just want to start again and approach it differently? Or do you think he'd actually 60. change his mind about playing at all? I don't think he'll regret the fact he's played here. Because if you don't play here, you're always going to ask yourself the question, what could I have done? It's like anything in life. If you don't 26. do it, you always leave the door open for question. Yeah, like I when you make your little jokes in commentary, you think, what if I had have made 16. that joke? You'd think that, wouldn't you? I can give you the answer, Henry. You wouldn't have got the tumbleweed response. 
One hundred. It's a tough school. This no, country, Lark. But uh, going back to the serious point. Well, to be fair, I agree with the point you're making. I just having a bit of a, a light moment in what is a serious moment for Paul Nicholson because One he's a man who has indulged in plenty of soul searching during his career, and he might be having a, another reflection over the course of the weekend. I think maybe the timing of this stint now. You guys obviously work on this. You do a lot of work for PDC TV and Talk Sport. You've had a very, very busy schedule in terms of broadcasting. We'll talk about this shortly because O'Shea wants tots tots for 3 0, and Nicholson's back on 130. 37. Paul, you require 130. Well, you really wanted that big fish finish yesterday. How about the little fish finish today? And it's not going to happen. And Paul Nicholson. Never mind the fishing, he's in danger of being battered here. 67. It's only you require 64. 32. Paul, you require 58. So Nicholson here wants 58. To bring it back to 3 1. Uh, sorry, to bring it back to 2 1. Yeah, it Double 10 makes line. it 2 1. Paul and Paul Nicholson is back in the match. But just going back to that conversation, I think maybe the time right now wasn't right just because he'd been doing a lot of work elsewhere. He maybe had, a, and I know it's difficult. I mean, you work a lot with Paul and you have busy diaries and schedules, but. If he could have just found a moment where possibly he could have a, a free week, maybe month where he knew he was not doing as much, then possibly he could he could have maybe done a bit more practice, things like that, just to ease his mind. With the busy schedule, the gap may not have been as long, possibly. Yeah, apologies. The gap between that leg is not usually as long, but I think we're on course to get it started. A slight little malfunction in the scoring system. Ford like it's Tony to throw first. Game on. I do think Paul Nicholson actually, you know, he's a person who does take things very seriously, particularly playing. He's much more 45. laid back, isn't he, in the commentary box. A great company as well. And maybe he should have looked at it in a, a much more light-hearted approach. Knowing that he's got so much work as a commentator... But, you know, this is a bit of a free roll. It's a bit of fun. Maybe treated it that way. But then we said with Mace that he wasn't going to come here to have a bit of fun. He was here to take it seriously. And I think maybe the only way Nico could do this the right way was to treat it as almost as if it was a proper tournament, as if it was something that, that meant... Something that was career-defining is where I'm kind of going to. He has to get maybe into that psyche. And we have a number of players like Nicholson who come in this competition, with Newton being another one who's had former glory. Newton has ambitions to get back onto the pro tour. But there are other players that have dropped off tour, come here as an opportunity just to keep their game in check and just to play. And they like to play with a bit of freedom, a bit of enjoyment when they're here. They want to win the big prize. They want to progress. They want to do well here. But they don't see it as the be all and end all. One hundred and eighty. Bit like Four Tony O'Shea. One hundred and sixty-one. He needs himself on ninety-five. Nicholson here. One one six one. Treble seventeen. It would have been an asset flashback. Ninety-seven. Tony, you require ninety-five. We could have sent the DeLorean back to twenty ten. Mind you, O'Shea wouldn't mind the Lord going back to 2012 64. himself. That's probably his peak years. World Finals in 12 and 13. World Masters Final 2012. Wow. Two slips there for Nicholson. And O'Shea is going to get a free go at tops. 24. Tony, you require 40.
Yeah, that's game shot in the fourth leg. Tony O'Shea. And O'Shea is a leg away from beating Nicholson to banish that particular Tuxton Fifth demon. Fifth for the throw first. Game on. And it mean it'll be 1-1 one, one in the battle of the commentators. Could have a pundit off conceivably in the final between Mason and O'Shea. One on the own 40. Yeah, absolutely. Sixty. Vantage Nicholson here in the fifth. With the dart. Needing the lot to stay in the match. And you sense to stay in the group. Ninety-one. Forty-three. One hundred. Sixty-three. Four, you require one hundred and seventy. Well, can he? Can he? A moment of magic. One hundred and five. Needs himself on 65 after the trial. Could be a moment of dart in defiance for the asset. He's now averaging more than O'Shea. 60. For you require 65. Now, we know Nicholson likes double 16. And so, treble 11 leaves 32. Now, double 8. 57. Well, the good news for him is that Tony O'Shea is a long way back in the leg. And that is an absolute flyer from O'Shea. What a switch. Bullseye should be the shot. Tony hasn't stopped and thought Four about it. Eight. Two four, so three two. Nice marker. Nice guide. The other side. Two twos. Yeah, that's game shot. Sneaks in the bottom player. left hand Ball corner Wilson. for the Geordie Ace. And O'Shea has the darts. Six like it's Not often first. in the modern day do we say Game that Stockport could get the better of Newcastle. Well, O'Shea's a leg away from doing exactly that. 60. O'Shea, big Stockport fan. Don't believe he's a season ticket holder over at Edgeley Park. Whenever we've 16. worked with him, he always spends his spare time that he spends with us in a Stockport County shirt or something like that. Big fan of his beloved club. One on an M40. You may not see him in action tomorrow because he may be here tomorrow night. A victory here against Nicholson will put him a step in the right direction of doing so. 83. Takes on Wes Newton in game eight. Takes on Richie Housen in game right. ten. But would be edging ever closer with victory here. And as we mentioned, Andy Jenkins would need just a couple of legs against Wes Newton to secure his spot. 43. That finals night alongside Richie Housen. Of course, he's still got ambitions of topping the group. Well, he's working his way down. 57. And even further down as he switched. Well, it's been a game that hasn't really had any kind of spark in it. Tony but Tony O'Shea will get the desired result, it seems. Six starts from 144. For Silverback. 58.
59. Tony, you require 86. For the match, 86 to O'Shea. Another one of them, the bull. 45. He was going for Four, the bull. You require 156. This would be a moment of inspiration. Another. So O'Shea wants 41. 100. To banish the hopes of the asset. Tony, you require 41. Another step in the right direction. For Tony O'Shea. Double 16. 25. But he's not there yet. And Paul Nicholson has been clinging to the cliff edge for much of this match. He might be about to haul himself back. Double top. Yeah, he's still in it. A six he's five. still in the fight. So well, well, well. Arc. It's ball to throw first. Game on. Three, one down. Nicholson has fought back. The eye of the tiger is there. We know he 16. can play to a much better standard than this, but he's scrapping away. He's fighting away. He's trying to carve something out. 100. The only victory last night came against Tony O'Shea, a 4-1 success. The pair of them were averaging in the mid-70s. They're there again. It's a really similar standard. I'm not sure that playing Paul Nicholson is actually 100. suited to the speed and rhythm of Tony O'Shea. He is one of the more pedestrian players in the field, the asset. 95. Such a silky smooth action, that of the silverback. Now, this would make things very interesting if Nicholson can get another one here. Tony O'Shea's, Tony O'Shea's unlikely to leave a finish anyway because he doesn't usually go the route that would. He actually has here. I take it back. 42. But he doesn't leave a finish, and it is interesting, isn't it? Paul Nicholson could be a couple of visits away, may even have three visits, to get a second win of the week. Not just pivotal moments in terms of the result in this match. It's a result that could 85. compile all sorts of conundrums in the group. Yeah, it means we're likely to be going right down to the end, doesn't it, this evening? This was the camel's back game, wasn't it? Where we may have seen it, most things decided or everything up in the air. Well, is Paul Nicholson about to leave Tony O'Shea with the hump? Another wayward one. O'Shea looking at a big one. Bullseye? No, and along for trouble 18. Tony, you require Not happy there, Nicholson. He's going to return for 86. Should get a dart at the bullseye from here. 28. Ball you require 86. Well, Harry would love to stick one in the treble 18 and get a couple of darts at his favourite double. Tony O'Shea's thrown this away. Paul Nicholson has taken advantage and he has a dart to win the match. 55. Fails to locate the target. Interesting, he didn't even think about the trouble. Went for the big 18. Still on here. 94 left. Needed the trouble 18 to leave top. So Nicholson returns for 31 to claim a second success a successive victory against Tony Four O'Shea. Yeah, no, su no surprise not going for the treble, by the way. Nicholson says it all the time. Make sure of it. Give yourself a shot. He's got two darts now at the outer ring. Double four. And he does it. Paul Shots Nicholson animates. reels off the Paul last Nicholson. three legs. And Tony O'Shea, well, he was almost there. He was taking a step towards finals night. All of a sudden, it's all to play for between the bottom three and that third place that seems to be up for grabs. Wes Newton is trying to join the party or stay in the race next when he takes on Andy Jenkins. But it's Nicholson four, O'Shea three. And that is a result that means... All will be to play for between the bottom three. Andy Jenkins is just one win away. He takes on Wes Newton next.
Welcome back to the Super Series where Paul Nicholson has just come from 3-1 behind to get the better of Tony O'Shea in a last leg decider in that one. Chris Murphy alongside me. Murph, did you see that one coming at any point? Uh, not really, and judging by Paul Nicholson's demeanour through the game, I'm not sure he did either. I'm not sure he's aware it's happened, actually. He didn't look too happy about getting the win. Uh, I think, you know, Wes Newton gave a great interview earlier this evening. I think sometimes the players need to forget about playing well and just concentrate on winning because two points is all you get whether you average 75 or 115. And interestingly you mentioned how seriously Nico is taking this but it's interesting that despite taking it so seriously he's not really showing that aggression is he? Yeah he's kind of caught in a between sort of two places isn't he Paul Nicholson who you know used to be this sort of aggressive player on the hockey and he's moved away from that is kind of more himself now um, but he, he seems to be caught between the two he can either take it not seriously at all and play with freedom or really get pumped up and 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 be up for it and it doesn't seem like he's either it seems a little bit flat but look he got over the line i think he needs to remind himself of that because he's still very much in the race he is indeed and we can see that with the league table now we thought at one stage that things might be sewn up after six games but it's not going to be that way at all of course andy jenkins could secure his place in finals night with a win in this next game but for Paul Nicholson, as you mentioned, it is now all to play for. It is O'Shea who's got the better leg difference. But Nico, given his demeanour and everything you've just spoken about, do you see him being able to do it? Uh, probably not, because he's got the two players who are playing pretty well in the group left to play, Richie House and, and Andy Jenkins. So that's going to be difficult for him to get victories against those players. Um, but the battle between the bottom three, I don't think it's going to be about who plays the best starts. It's going to be about the one who can grind out results. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. It's going to be exciting and we're going to be uh, still working out long into the night and maybe playing Richie House and at this stage where he hasn't got to get up for games and doesn't have anything to play for I know he wants to go into finals night with confidence but maybe that is something that Nico could cling on to possibly yeah possibly but again I just think he needs to to focus on what he's doing and not worry about the situation for his opponent or um, I didn't think Richie Housen was bad in defeat to Andy Jenkins, to be honest, so I'm not sure how much that's affected him. And, yeah, it's really difficult to, to decipher what's going on between those bottom three, but I think Andy Jenkins and Rich Housen can safely say, well, we know Housen is. I think Jenkins will follow soon. Yeah, absolutely, and it is Andy Jenkins who's up next against Wes Newton. As Murph just mentioned, Jenks taking out this 56 to beat Housen in that last match. And... As Murph also mentioned, Housen didn't play badly at all in that match. So it'll be interesting to see how this one progresses as we go into the final stages of Group B. Let's get into this one then. Henry, back over to you. Thank you very much, Abby. Andy Jenkins can secure qualification with victory here against Wes Newton. And in doing so, will create absolute carnage for the rest of the Group B field to secure the final place through to tomorrow night's final here on Sporty Stuff TV. Where's Newton then? The 45-year-old from Fleetwood, having won two matches so far this week, both of them coming against Paul Nicholson. Successes last night and this evening up against Jenkins, 51 on eight points. First leg, it's Victory here first would put him game. on to 10 and would put him in an unassailable position. And then, we would be reaching Abacus Hour here at the Live Lounge. Because we would have O'Shea on four, Nicholson on four, Newton still on four. But the Warrior would have played a game more. O'Shea would have played Nicholson already. We've seen that in the last matchup. And then from this point onwards, Nicholson 40. plays Housen. O'Shea would have Newton. And that would be Newton's last game. Then we'd have Jenkins play Nicholson and then Tony O'Shea 40. ends the show against Richie Housen. So it'll be interesting to see how the dynamic pans out. 60. And if you are joining us here at the start of Saturday morning, the start of finals day here at the Super C, it's a very warm welcome to you. One on the name, 40. Great to have your company. Don't forget to subscribe to our social media channels as well whilst you're here whilst you're joining us at MSF Darts but Jenkins first to finish 1-2-1 one, one after 9 trouble 17 would have left him a dart with a ball 62 59 remaining after 12 he's taken the dominance 
He's taken the ascendancy in this opening leg. 85, and you require 59. Should get two at tops. Does get two at tops. Yeah, that's good. By 14 dark breaker throw to open up proceedings, and Andy Jenkins is three legs away Second from and the finishing the post, the finishing Two. line, and to cement his place into tomorrow night's finals. He can put it in writing. He can send out 44. the RSVPs. He can get Pompey's darty party well and truly started. Six and if you want to join us here tomorrow night on those banks of seats that you can see behind us, do come and join us. 18. We're Portsmouth based in the south of England, and it's dartshop.tv, the place to be to get your free tickets for tomorrow night's affair. 55. We know who we're going to see already. We're going to see Richie Housen in action. We're going to see Mark Dubbridge in action, Gary Robson in action, and Chris Mason as well. 59. We could soon see Andy Jenkins join that particular field. Yeah, and he'll be delighted to be there, won't he, Andy Jenkins? We've mentioned it a few times, but just one of the little side issues here where we are 16. based in Portsmouth is the stomping ground of Rocky. And yours as well, Henry. I'd just try and elaborate 14. a little bit more for the viewers. I know you've grown up being a darts fan. Is he one of the, the first players that you were aware of? Uh, yes. Um, not just be, uh, because he's a big name in Portsmouth. Uh, he was well known with people that you know my family associate with as well. And he's a very well known 14. person across the city. Very well respected person across the city. He's a big name. And when when I talk to general people around this city in restaurants, bars, things like that about darts. If you go generically around the country, people talk about Van Gogh, people talk about Taylor, Bristow, people like that. But here in Portsmouth, they mention Andy Jenkins. He's a big name and a big deal around here. Sounds like you are as well. We all want a, a little dose of the Deacon high life, don't we? Restaurants, bars, clubs. You know you're such a socialite. And you require 153. Tables are for one, Murph, let's be honest. No one wants to spend their evenings in my company. Well, it could be a top table for two if Andy Jenkins gets over the line here. But Wes Newton has something to say about it. 20 for tops to level up the match. 59, and you require 16. 20 for tops to double his lead in the match. 14, Wes, you require 20. Ten, and you require twenty. Two tens for two nil. Double five. And following the excellence in the first leg from no Jenkins, score. it's just got Rest a little bit tetchy ten. in the second. Yeah, that's game short. And it is all square. Leg. And I'll tell you what, we're speaking to Abby there about, you know, Worrying about winning and not about how well you play. Andy Jenkins won't care. Bird like it's West to throw first. As long as he gets Game through, on. that's all that matters. Playing well can be for tomorrow. Save it for another day. 16. Just get through. Because... Yesterday's history 81. and tomorrow is a mystery. And that's the way that he'd want to look at it if he gets through tonight. Can't change what's happened in terms of performances. One on the own 40. You can dictate what you do on finals night. One on the own 14. Key, key match for Wes Newton, of course. Three players tied on four points. Newton has by far the worst leg difference of the three One of them. One on the own 14. So he wants to win and win as handsomely as possible. 
Still has Tony O'Shea to play, Ross remember. That could be the key contest in this group tonight. That could have been a key turning point in this particular contest. And you require 140. This 140 could be a key turning moment in this contest. It won't go, and so Newton returns to 64 to get his nose in front for the first time in this match. 64. Another or top uh, or double eight or single eight for tops. <laughs> Forty-four, and you require Got me all tongue tied 40. there. Yeah, that's game short than the first. Simple line. from Andy, Andy Jenkins, Jenkins, though. I'll leave it to you in future, Henry. Made a fool of myself. Ford like it's Andy to throw first. Game on. At least I'm not the only one. One hundred and thirty-seven. Well, the equation for Jenkins is simple. Two more legs and he's in. Doesn't get much simpler than that. One hundred and forty. Well, Wes is just starting to wake up a little bit, as he did rather bizarrely late into the 42. night, or probably more accurately described as early into the morning in... The action on the opening session of this group. And here we are, 16. 10 past midnight, all of a sudden. Where's Newton is a bell of the ball? Peaking in the early hours. 59. And thank you to those who are joining us in the early hours. And of course, to our international viewers across the world. I know there's a fair few tuning in at tea time in 18. America. Good day to all of those joining us from Australia and across Asia and all of our various other parts of the world, Central Europe. You're not going to do your accent One again, are and 37. I'm going to save myself further. I've embarrassed myself enough for the last couple of days. One well, no embarrassment there. 80, and you require 126. Andy Jenkins under pressure suddenly. That dart rejected. Don't think it came out of the treble. But Wes Newton is starting to 22. get a little bit better. Wes, you require 41. 180. Setting up this shot. And double top. Can complete the leg. That's a decent guide for him, too. Yeah, that's game shot than the forward line. 2-2. Two -two. Wes Newton. An applause for Andy Jenkins and some respect for Wes Newton for what he did in that leg. But Andy like Jenkins, so first. he's Game not on. yet home and hose. Because a win here for Newton makes it very interesting. He moves on to six points. O'Shea will play in his next match. Nicholson he takes on House, and obviously he's not a part of the process because he's already through. Nicholson wins that. He's on six points. Then O'Shea takes on Newton. One hundred and twenty-five. Yeah, interestingly... Newton's doing the other players a favour here because Newton himself can't catch Andy Jenkins in terms of the leg difference. He was 15 behind him before this game started. But both Paul Nicholson and Antonio O'Shea can. There's conceivability by the end of game nine when Jenkins One takes on Nicholson, 40. they could be level on points and it could all go down to the final game between House and O'Shea depending on his results because he plays Wes Newton in match eight. 42. Really interesting unfolding to come. Jenkins, though, has got the pole position back in this match, having gone off 125, one, followed up one, with 140, two. and then hit hard with a 180 to leave himself on an 11 dart leg against the throw. Everything we just said, you might as well just forget. And the because Andy Jenkins, 56. in about 10 seconds, will be a leg away. His timing when he's need to be on it has been yeah, on it. That's game he does so line. again there. Andy 11 dart break of throw to go within one leg of being back here tomorrow night. Six leg, it's Andy to throw first. It's in his game hands. On. He has the throw. He has the chance. 59. Forty-three has a little rally from Newton. Come to an early end. 
Decent leg for him a couple ago, but he was still in the mid 300s when Andy Jenkins went out in the previous one. Another bounce out in his last visit of that leg as well. That's been a, a bone of contention for him. 100. Nothing to do with the superb Winmore boards we use here. It's all about the way that Wes Newton's darts 85. try to go in it. Ninety-seven, and so Jenkins is on the cusp. He's potentially six darts away. Sixty-five. And he's one six seven after twelve. He's found a spurt, found a rally at the perfect time. His average now is ticked up to eighty-eight 60. and a half. And he's so just been the most memory kites he's found over the last two legs. Yeah, very similar standard to that he produced in the previous match. No need to bother with the bullseye. 97. No need for fireworks here from Andy Jenkins. And that's what we've been saying. Think about winning. Doesn't need to be fancy. 100. All it needs to be is and effective. He requires 70. And Andy Jenkins needs double 16 to book his place Game. at final night. And, and it is joy for Jenkins. Jenkins. He will be here. The hometown hero in Portsmouth will be in action at finals night tomorrow. Another decent darting display from Andy Jenkins, who really turned it on for the last couple of legs in that match, including an 11 darter as he got away from Wes Newton and gets a win over Wes Newton that seals his spot in Saturday's session. Coming next, it is Paul Nicholson, still fighting, still scrapping, taking on the also qualified. Richie Housen.
Good evening and welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Andy Jenkins, having won all three of his matches so far this evening, has booked his spot in finals night. Let's find out how the local lad is feeling after that one. Andy Jenkins, job done. You came here with a mission and you have completed it. You are heading to finals night. Just sum up how you're feeling for us. I'm feeling absolutely fantastic. You know, I mean, I've had a lot of pressure. Obviously, I've got a lot of friends coming set tomorrow night and um, it's done and sealed now. So... Um, They'll be on the way home. I can't wait to get hold of my phone and see the messages I can get. Overnight, you gave yourself work to do. And did that add some pressure to you heading here today? Um, yeah, yeah uh, yesterday I felt a little bit nervous. Obviously, I'd done what I had to do. You, you lads know I just had to get away from the, the venue and um, sort my head out. When you beat Richie House, and that must have been a huge confidence boost as well, his first defeat here in the Super Series. Well, yeah, I should have beaten him yesterday. You know, he had, he had cracking darts and... Um, you know, <laughs> look, there's a lot of pressure on me. Um, with everything I was favourite at the beginning of the week, Mason's been playing well, a lot of things have been going on, and now, now I'm there tomorrow night, and um, it's anyone's game tomorrow. So, Home support going to be a big factor tomorrow? Um, I don't think so. I, I, I think it could be a hindrance to me personally, because obviously my friends will be cheering me on, and it can help me, and it can hinder me. So... Um, We'll see tomorrow. At the end of the day, I'm there tomorrow, and that's all I want to be there. Andy Jenkins, congratulations. Thank you. Cheers. Jenkins playing down his chances for finals night there. Then Paul Nicholson against Richie Housen is coming up next. Of course, Paul Nicholson has kept his hopes of qualifying alive. But Richie Housen was the first player to qualify through from Group B this evening. Here's how he did it. Another clinical display from him. Really impressive. We've seen many players falter as they approached the finishing line to qualify for finals night. But not Richie Housen. He did so in superb fashion there let's get into this one then and see whether Paul Nicholson can back up his last victory and keep his hopes alive in Group B lads back over to you thanks Abby yes we, it's been a theme hasn't it players playing themselves down playing down their chances over the course of this week started by Chris Mason Mark Dudbridge did it after qualifying Richie House and the only man that seemed pretty happy to be through and he will be looking to cement his position at the top of the table by moving on to 12 points with victory over Paul Nicholson here. But if it goes the other way, suddenly Paul Nicholson is in the box seat to finish third and join the likes of his fellow Super Series commentator and pundit Chris Mason at finals night. The asset looking to get the better of Housen, who won every game until he qualified and lost every game after he qualified, but it has only been one. Exactly. As you say, crucial game here for Nico. It's game on or game over for him in terms of qualification first for the group. But the through first, game on. We heard there from Andy Jenkins. He's always very honest in interviews, is, is Jenks. He's a very honest guy. And interesting, as you mentioned, the, the crowd element of it. And Phil asked the question in the interview there, and 14. he said, well, he doesn't actually know if it's going to be a help or a hindrance. He's going to have the support, but of course, that can be a double-edged sword at the same time. Yeah, true. Not quite game over, is it, for Paul Nicholson, but as good as he'd be clinging to that cliff edge once 16. more, this time by a dangling fingernail or two. And he would need a, an incredible run of results to go in his favour if he does lose out to Richie House. And he'd actually need, wouldn't he, Wes Newton to beat... Tony O'Shea realistically because Newton's got one such a, a bad leg difference that he's the only one he can really catch. Then he'd have to beat Andy Jenkins himself and then hope that Housen does for O'Shea in the last match. So not a position that Paul Nicholson 54. wants to be. The best thing he can do is get this one won and a 180 in the opening leg will help him on his way. It'll certainly help the cause. That won't though. 67. Carved it well with the last dart. In front against Housen. Who, of course, knows no matter what happens, he will be here tomorrow night. He will play in front of the wonderful crowd, the wonderful audience. And may I say, the very loud audience is going to be here tomorrow. Now, Andy Jenkins has secured his way through. Head over to dartshop.tv and be a part of this intimate darting experience. Your tickets are free. 46. 
Well, Nicholson here has gone 25. Last start, he's left himself on 168. But at the start of the 45. visit, he's on 214. Two single fives. So left himself on 204. So I'm looking at the visit before. My apologies. Yeah, single one it was his first start, followed by a 20. But it won't matter. 29. Four, you require 68. Oh, he's missed a big number there, and that might matter. Because Richie Housen has been excellent in the department of finishing. Specifically, ton topping checkouts 36. as well. Richie, you require one he will fancy six. this. And Paul Nicholson will be all too aware of the Owl's prowess in this department. Double 16 to deny Nicholson a shot at the same target, but he will come and throw up to three. For the 1 0 lead. That's a nice guide. Has to move across. Yeah, that's game and find its way line. in. Paul Mickelson. And suddenly, Messrs. O'Shea and Newton, ahead of their battle in game eight, like may be drawing, first, maybe not on. a chair, because they should be practicing ahead of their next match, but they will be probably throwing some practice darts with one eye on the board and one eye on the TV screen. Yeah, the one thing that Nicholson knows is that one of them is going to be on six points after that 41. match, so he really wants to put himself there. Of course, Tony O'Shea still has the advantage. He's the man in third place right now. A slightly better leg difference than Paul Nicholson. And, of course, still has two games to play. One of them against Richie 16. Houghton. And it's looking like Houghton has taken his foot off the gas since qualifying. About two hours ago, you'd say Paul Nicholson had the hardest two fixtures in the group against Houghton and Jenkins. However, now they've both qualified. And as we mentioned earlier on, the pressure is off. They're going to relax a bit. Yeah, good point. But I think I think Andy Jenkins is a kind of different beast mm. than, than Richie House, and he's maybe not been relaxed this 41. evening, and maybe relaxation for him could result in some of his best stuff. He's been talking about the pressure he's been putting on himself, and maybe he can play with a little bit of freedom. One on the own, 40. If Nicholson wins here, there is no doubt about the fact he'll want Wes Newton to win the next one because Newton can only get to six. That's the max he can get to. Yeah, and the leg difference is, you know, miles off what what Paul is on, in fact. 45. If Paul Nicholson wins here, then he's going to be on a minimum of minus two, isn't he? Wes Newton is then nine behind, so actually couldn't catch 59. him. 59. And then you've got to hope that Andy Jenkins then succumbs to the asset if you are Nicholson. And hope Housen does a job on O'Shea. Yeah, so just confirmation there. One on the 40. Quick arithmetic tells us that a win in this match for Paul Nicholson actually eliminates Wes Newton from the race. Indeed it does. The field is getting whittled down. One on the 38. However, in this leg, Housen has raced clear, leaving tops after 15. Nicholson back on 2 1 5. 60. Richie, you require 40. Now we're looking to perch on tops. Not the best guide for him, really. We'll have to keep going. No across score. the bed, and he fails to get below those darts. Well, this would be some way to light up the spark. What's going to happen? So, House of Returns for tops for one apiece. 100. Richie, you require 40. Again, it might be a little bit too close for comfort, that dart. 
Missing high on tops no for Richie Housen. He wants to be too high. He doesn't want well, to be so close because it's very difficult for him to get past a dart above a bed and into it. And Paul Nicholson is a big beneficiary here of the six starts squandered by his opponent. Double 10 for an early break. 45. Richie, you require 40. Tots of Housen. I mean, in fairness, Nicholson should not have won this leg from the position that he's in. He may still do. If the double five doesn't go, there it does go. And we are level at one apiece. He had a bit of a smile from the Third asset like there. The he knew first. he had the opportunity yeah. in a leg that he was completely outplayed in. Eighty-one, And of course, there will be one final place up for grabs tomorrow night in Champions Week, which begins on Monday here on Sporty Stuff TV. We know 80. 11 of the 12 identities for that particular Tungsten contest. Started with Robert Owen in week one of the competition. And then we saw subsequent weekly wins for the likes of Chaz Barstow, Graham Hall, Dow Pilgrim, Lee Evans, Kieran Tiam on the first night 59. here at the Live Lounge, Graham Usher, Conan Whitehead, Scott Williams, Gavin Kahn, and Peter Jakes. The 11 weekly winners thus far who will make it the dozen lineup here at the Super Series 16. Champions Week and be in with a chance of winning £20,000 British Sterling. One of them, 40. Well, Housel is in a decent spot here, so that treble is very timely for Paul Nicholson. He'd love another one. 100. Fails to find and might have to produce something big depending on the leave from his opponent. Well, it's going to be a good leave. One of the own 40. A very good Paul leave indeed. And Paul Nicholson may need to produce a party piece. Hasn't been much sign of that. 59. Richie, you require 82. Seventeen. And tops. Yeah, that's game and Housen in the gets it. Line. Paul looking puzzled Richie in the Housen. background. He knows he had a chance in the previous leg. Could have been two ahead. Now he finds himself one behind. Forward lag is Richie to throw first. Game on. That's how quickly this game can change. And it was Housen who managed to get the opening break of the match. So if he holds here, Nicholson 60. is well, not one leg away from elimination, but as good as. He's staring the tungsten barrel in the face. But he's persevering. He's trying to conjure up a way. Forty. This game is being played at a rather pedestrian pace, isn't it? We'll see something rather snappier and speedier when O'Shea faces Newton in the next one. Forty-five. Well, Richie's wondering where his level has gone. It has dropped, hasn't it? Sixty. Down into the the low seventies. A similar standard to that being produced by Paul Nicholson here. 
And you just wonder if subconsciously his head is already elsewhere, Richie Howson. But what happens 95. is then you consciously get frustrated because obviously you're aware of the scores that you're hitting and the scores that you're not hitting, if you like. And you start to get frustrated and start to change things and can have a tendency to go from bad to worse. 14. Well, it's a two-way street, isn't it? You've got the elation of qualifying and then, you, of course, you're thinking about tomorrow night. You're probably thinking about arrangements, things like that. You try not to, but it enters your mind. And then the natural oh, adrenaline, right, which we've right, spoken right. about in the previous match against Jenkins, doesn't go through the body, flow through the body. And then when the darts don't go in and when your opponent as well is struggling as much, your brain has probably got eight different things going on at the same time. And it's probably 59. hard to make Does sense and juggle it all. 61. Both players on huge checkouts here. Housen on one is already taken out. Won't do it again. One hundred and thirty. Paul Nicholson looked Paul on rather nervously there. I think he was actually biting his nails as Housen went for that one. He won't be nailing the checkout. Fifty-six. He best not Richie bite his fingernails because if Housen nails his double twelve, that'll be where his hopes are hanging on by. Double six. Yeah, and Nicholson's on the ropes. Richie Hosen. Yeah, just a reminder, Paul Nicholson, if he loses this match, he's not Fifth flag is for the throw definitely first. out of the race, but very close to being. Still has a game to play against Andy Jenkins. Tony O'Shea and Wes Newton play each other. Could be out of 16. it by the end of that match, depending on the, the outcome of the game in terms of legs, if O'Shea wins it handsomely. On the other side of the table, no. Richie Housen will tighten his grip on top spot, a position he's held since this group started. Andy Jenkins has joined him on 10 points, but this is a game in hand for Housen, having lost to Jenks earlier this evening. I mean this in the nicest way. 82. At the beginning of the evening, Richie Hounsen would not have liked me and you to be talking about him much tonight because that would have meant he would have done his job at the earliest possible juncture and he can work his way into the final. 16. That's I'm not happy with the level, but he is edging ever closer. Every leg matters now for Paul Nicholson. 57. Four points tied with Tony O'Shea and Wes Newton. Wes Newton's leg difference is a disaster for him. Minus 11. Paul Nicholson is minus three. Tony O'Shea, minus one. 100. And it is Newton O'Shea next. Wes Newton remains in it with a house and victory here. And then he can put himself on six points ahead of Tony and Paul. But we'll then have to wait to see. If they 14. win, knowing that if either of them do, they'll have a better leg difference and will therefore usurp him and knock him out. So one thing that will be certain is the future of Wes Newton 100. in this tournament at the end of the next match. It is going to go down to the boil. Richie, you require so one for one for the match. Won't go this time. He has six at it because Nicholson's back on 204. 59. He's himself on 82 after 15 to seal the deal, to seal the win. And to continue his fabulous campaign in Group B, it will put him on 12 points. He continues his search to be the 12th player into Champions Week next week. 82 for the match. Double 16. Game. And it sneaks Shot. into and the bottom left-hand corner. Hansen. Richie Housen gets the better of Paul Nicholson by four legs to one. A sporting handshake between the pair. Housen with an average of 77.2. Four from 16. 
on the doubles. It was one of those affairs that someone just wanted just to get over the line somehow, some way. It was Housen who did exactly that. But the biggest game of our night so far comes in the next match. It's Tony O'Shea, it's Wes Newton, it's live and next. Welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth where we've just seen Richie Housen come through and get the better of Paul Nicholson. Housen understandably taking his foot off the gas slightly since securing his place in finals night. He was the most clinical on the outer ring on the opening night but squandered multiple darts a double early on in that one. Nico unable to capitalise though and the Owl started to find his range at the back end of legs. As we've said so many times, important to head into finals night in good form and on a good run. And Housen seems to be doing just that at the moment. We can take a little look at the league table. Then it is, of course, the business end now in Group B. And as you can see, confirmation that Housen and Jenkins are through. And if Tony O'Shea gets a 4-0 victory here, he will join them and end Paul Nicholson's chances of getting through to finals night. If Wes wins, it'll be an anxious wait for him to see whether he can be toppled in third spot. So then Wes's one victory so far this evening coming against Paul Nicholson, of course. Here he is pinning double 16 to get over the line in that one with his third dart in hand. It was a quite an edgy affair, wasn't it? Wasn't the highest quality match of the evening, I think it's very fair to say, but he did get a crucial two points in that one. So then, can Tony O'Shea book his place in finals night with a comprehensive victory in this one? Let's find out and hand back to the lads in commentary. Thanks, Abby. It's the first of two chances, isn't it, for Tony O'Shea? A win would 
get him as good as there. We know a 4-0 win would secure his spot, but even in defeat, he will come back knowing that victory against Richie Housen, who seems to have fallen flat after qualifying, would probably get him over the line. A heavy defeat is all that he's really desperate to avoid here, but it's in his hands. All he's thinking about is a victory, not the margin of it. That's not his style. Every match at a time, every dart at a time is the silver back way. Wes Newton has been scrapping, has been scrappy, but he's still in the scrap, as is Paul Nichols and all of the bottom three still in the race. Andy Jenkins and Richie Housen already through. A pivotal contest then first line between the Warrior to throw first. and Game Tony on. O'Shea, a match that went the way of O'Shea yesterday. And guess what the score was? Tony O'Shea 4, Wes Newton nil. If he can repeat 85. the trick, he's through to the finals night. Indeed he is. Just wonder what 45. Wes Newton's thinking at this present moment in time. One because he knows even if he wins, two, he's one. waiting for other results to come in. Well, he's got to do his bit first, hasn't he? There's no point worrying about that yet. All he can worry about 44. is the game in front of him. But it could be an anxious wait for Wes Newton, as Abby said, because both Paul Nicholson and Antonio Shea got close to Jenkins and Housen in the first couple of matches last night. They both went the distance, 4-3. Well, Shea's the one who's got off to the brighter start, even 198 after 9. 43. And 58. if the game carries on in this vein, the 4 0 could be very conceivable. 140 then, O'Shea's left. We have Newton all the way back. Forty one. Tony, you require one hundred and forty. Now, there's only one player who's interested in this result in the practice room. That's Paul Nicholson. And if you're watching this yeah, double ten for one forty from Tony, Tony O'Shea, O'Shea, very intently indeed. The silverback sets his stall out. Second leg. That 140 finish. Game on. To give him the lead. Flying start. I won't make a, a point of displaying the average here because it's not good from Wes Newton, but I'll just tell you that Tony O'Shea is 55 points in 81. front in that metric after that first leg. When O'Shea pinned that 140, Wes Newton was on 328. Thirty. In any match at the Super Series, 4-0 is almost always the most 100. unlikely score. But it's a score that O'Shea got yesterday. It's a score he needs to secure his spot now. I'm not sure if Tony's a man who'll be too aware of that. 41. I think he knows a win and he's as good as in. But it might be a, a nice surprise to do it with a game to spare. Tony's one of those players that'll just 14. go up, throw some darts. And if he wins, he wins. He's, he's one of those people. He's happy-go-lucky. Takes everything as it comes. The other thing is Paul Nicholson's involvement, of course. 16. If he'd just got one more leg against Richie House, and that wouldn't be the case. O'Shea couldn't have been through after this match. I mean, it's one of the elements of the game that only right. comes into play in this format, this round-robin format that we have here at the Super Series. And for players like Tony... Well, he's played at the Grand Slam, so he's used two group stage four. He's probably one of the most experienced players we've actually had over the course of the 12-week cycle here at the Moda Super Series in terms of round robin format. He was a regular at the Grand Slam for a number of years, so he knows how this 45. format works. Yeah, but there's a, 
a difference, isn't there? Grand Slam, it's one match per night, isn't it? Whereas you're going to know exactly what you need to do going into that final match here. It changes so quickly and the games come so thick and fast. Sometimes there isn't time. You know, we, we admittedly struggle to work it out sometimes. So the players trying to do that amongst the practice and all that is very, very difficult. And probably the best advice is not to worry about it and just 41. get on with trying to win as many West matches as you can. Because you can overcomplicate things. O'Shea wants 94 then to open up a 2-0 lead. And it could be halfway towards progression because if he won two more without conceding, he will go through to the finals tomorrow night. Goes ball first dart. Back to the middle. But it will not solve the Tuxton riddle. And so Newton is back for 90 and he will most likely probably possibly go for the ball himself. Well, at the end of the, the visit. Well, it does go for it at the start. And doesn't have to go for it at the end because he's found the treble. 18. What a bold move Tony from Wes Newton there. 2 8. Just shuffling across to try and open up the angle. Nine. But could not find a way. Wes and Wes Newton 10. may find a way back into the match. And of course, it would be the dart that means Tony O'Shea's passage to finals night would be at least delayed a little longer Six. that bounced out but it was underneath the double wire so it wasn't an in and outer Tony, you require O'Shea 16. wants double eight and it would be for a break on top of this 2-0 lead you may have to shuffle across again yeah, that's finds its the way in Tony he had to move across but he had a lovely lie with the first start where he could basically crash it in off the first. Now that's the bounce Third out from Newton. Tony As you can see, first. the double was dragging low below the bed. And it just clipped the wire between the double two and the double 17 next door. 16. As it stands now, Tony O'Shea, seven legs better off than Paul Nicholson. If he wins two more, he'd be nine legs better off. The biggest swing possible is eight legs 13. with one match each left to play. Sixteen. Even even dropping a leg here and winning the match four one, he, he would have to lose four nil, and Paul Nicholson will have to win four nil. Sixteen. So close to definitely being there with any victory, isn't he? Pretty much. And the way that these two have played in this match, ninety nine. You would still fancy the four nil to be a distinct possibility. Yeah, we haven't seen the best of Tony, but unfortunately we've seen the worst of Wes. 59. I think that look said it all, and I think that's possibly summed up Wes Newton's week here at the Super Series so far. 16. And a couple of treble 20s in the second leg, and that treble 15. One on their own 40. To set up double 10 at the end of it. Until that 140 he's just hit there. They were the only three trebles he's had in the match. 94. Moves across for the 18s. Does so successfully. Leaves himself on 2 8 after 15. Newton on 2 1 2. 44. Tony, you require 128. So 1 2 8 for O'Shea. For three nil. Ninety two. He's himself on double eighteen upon his return for three nil. Yeah, nothing Newton can do. Antonio 45. Shea can move one Tony step closer. 36. Well it would be a giant leap closer in truth. Double eighteen. Yeah, that's and Tony O'Shea is a leg Tony away O'Shea. from joining Jenkins and Housen at finals night and completing the field. Our Super 6 will be Ford Larkins, Weston, Mark Fofers, Dubridge, Game Chris Mason, Gary Robson, Richie Housen, Andy Jenkins, and if he wins this leg, Tony O'Shea. And probably, even if he doesn't. Looks like the field may be set, but... 
Never confirm anything until 20. it's done, until it's over the line. Because suddenly, Wes Newton's found his scoring points. boots a little bit. Top 40, followed by a ton. One on an M40. He wanted the big one, didn't he? Tony O, you saw the little wince there. Where's Newton? Still one on an M20. Defiance, still fighting. It will be a frustrating delay for Tony O'Shea should Newton 16. get the leg. He just wants to dot Rush the I's and cross the T's, doesn't he? Not to nick a line from his walk on song, but he wants to know whether he's in finals night. 39. Well, that just sums it up for Wes Newton, doesn't it? To bounce out to leave himself on a three darter instead of a two. Or yeah, maybe even better than that. I was going to say, it may sum up his week if Tony can crack in a two 18. trouble visit. Wes should require 99. 99 then for Newton. Is it tops tops? That was the plan. Tony O'Shea's 59. plan now is to execute this and get rid of Paul Nicholson and Wes Newton from the running. Would have been a stylish way to do it. May have to wait. Of course, he might not have to wait long. He might even be through before he plays 20. West his Nicholson final match. 40. Is he going to be through straight away in this one? Double 10 says not yet. Double 5... Says, hold your horses, Tony. 35. But double eight will put O'Shea Tony, you in Saturday's 16. session. Double four. Double two. Game. And Tony Shot. O'Shea and will be a part Tony of the Darty Party in Pompey on Saturday night. You'll hear the famous walk-on on the big stage with a crowd on Saturday evening. The lineup for Week 12 Finals is complete because Tony O'Shea has qualified. He beats Wes Newton by four legs to nil, with that high checkout being the highlight of a 140. So we know the field. It's O'Shea, Jenkins and House and Fru from Group B. But we are going to dot the I's. We're going to cross the T's. And we're going to try and finish with a flourish here in Group B. We're going to take a short break. It's going to be a final game this week for Paul Nicholson. For Andy Jenkins, it's a warm-up ahead of tomorrow night's final.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Tony O'Shea has completed our lineup for finals night. He needed a 4 0 whitewash win to do it in that last match, and aided by this 140 checkout in the opening leg, he was able to get what he needed. Four out of 11 on the outer ring in that match, and Tony O'Shea is through to finals night. We can hear from him now. He's with Phil. Tony, you've just said, looking at the screen there with Abby, some good, some bad. Does that sum up your Super Series so far? Uh, it sums up the whole week, to be honest, yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, he had some bad luck there again. He's, it's been all night. He's, he's had so many out of the board, even in the practice room. So, I don't know whether it's a point problem or whatever, but he had no luck again in that game. You had no idea you were through until you came in here. How does that feel to make another final here at the Super Series? Yeah, that's uh, my third week and I've made two finals nights. So... Considering I don't think I've ever played well here, I mean, I'm, I'm made up with that. I mean, I honestly thought I was going on to Stockport and watch County against Grimsby tomorrow, and uh, <laughs> turns out I'm staying down here for another night. It's been a tough group as well, so this must please you to come for it. Yeah, there's some there's some quality in there, some proper old school darters, and and obviously I, I felt for Wes there because, it's, as I said, he had no luck. But yeah, just uh, I had a bad start to the night and and lost a couple of close games, and I had chances, but. Um, yeah, to, to sneak that one 4-0 and, and to be told just by you about five minutes ago that I've qualified. Yeah, yeah, I'm made up with that. I'm made up. Finals night, all on one night. Do you fancy it? If you're in the finals night, you've got a chance. And uh, I've been there once before. I lost to um, Johnny Hines, I think. Johnny Haynes. And that was a close game. And, and yeah, yeah I'll, I'll give it everything like I always do. It's not always good enough, but I, I'll give it everything. Tony, congratulations and we'll see you back tomorrow. Tony O'Shea continuing the theme there and playing down his chances ahead of finals night. It's time to get into our penultimate game of the evening. Then it is Andy Jenkins against Paul Nicholson. Of course, nothing riding on these two games anymore. But let's get into it and hope for some more darting entertainment. Lads, back over to you. Thanks, Abby. Yes, it is a couple of, in a way, meaningless matches. But I don't think Paul Nicholson will see this that way. He wants to sign off with a victory and walk out with a uh, another little win next to his name. And, of course, if he does that, he'll join Tony O'Shea on six points, but can't catch him. And we do now know the field for finals night. And as Tony said, Henry, every single player there has got a chance. You've got to be in it to win it. But who are you making favourite from the six? Richie Housen, because I think he's got a top level that I think may supersede the rest of the field at this present moment in time. And I'm going to keep myself in favour with my friend and go for Chris Mason. You don't know what you've just done there, Henry. He will not be speaking to you tomorrow. Although Andy Jenkins may well be favoured by many. First leg, it's Andy to throw first. Game on. I think he was going to carry on practising there, Andy Jenkins. A little bit of a... Light entertainment, and he's letting the referee Marco Maya know about it. Reversed for the handshake before the match with Paul Nicholson, but it is 100. game on. Never seen him smile so much. I suppose you can relax when you go through, can't you, Murph? Yeah, absolutely. We'll see whether it has the house and effect or a different one on Andy Jenkins because it looks like house and has slid in standard despite a win over Nicholson in his last game. I think Andy Jenkins could 16. actually produce some of his best stuff here. And I think, personally, I think actually in terms of standard, there are three players that really stand out. And I think it's the two that have finished the top of this table. 16 in Housen and Jenkins, and Chris Mason. And that seems bizarre, because Mark Dubridge, of course, won the group in Group A over three days, beating Mason. But I think Tony O'Shea is right. I don't think we've seen the best of him. I think he's right in saying he's never really played well at the Super Series, but it's not a bad habit to have, is it, to keep qualifying for finals night without playing well. And it is all on the night. And we know that Tony O'Shea is more than well, capable, as are 40. any of the players, of putting a a good run of four matches together to take the title. Completely agree with your thoughts and opinions on that, 45. Murph. I think there are three standout names, as you mentioned, in this field. 
but then don't want out anyone. Finals night is one of those nights where anyone can just go through. Remember, short course format, two group matches, followed by the semis in the final. 100. Just to reiterate, it is this man, Andy Jenkins, Richie House, Antonio O'Shea, Mark Dubridge, Chris Mason, and Gary Robson, your finals 19. night field Four here at Super Series. Action underway from 10 p.m. live on Sporty Stuff TV on Saturday night. Fifty six, and you require one hundred and twenty five. Well, Nicholson has a chance to break in leg one here. Eighty four, four you require forty eight. Do you think he'd like a little bit of revenge on Andy Jenkins for that four three defeat in his opener? Double eight. Yeah, that's Bound been sure than the first by line. Paul Nicholson, Paul who hits the front in this one. A solid start for the asset. And he might Second think very differently about first. this week if he manages Game. to side off with a victory. A recency bias, perhaps, but if Nicholson can play well for just one match, then it's just something to cling on to, isn't it? You just take any crumb of comfort you can. 100. And we mentioned in an, in an earlier match that a lack of game time over a long period of time. Yeah, you're not going to hit the strap straight away. 123. 100. The frustrating thing for Paul Nicholson will be those defeats to Wes Newton. The man who always seems to get the better of him because had he managed to win just one of those matches, Nicholson would still be in contention right now. Forty five. And the thing is, Nico can now just leave everything out there, just try and Empty the tungsten tank. Just leave everything out there. Try and go out with a bit of style. Maybe go for a little bit of showbiz stuff as well. More importantly than anything else, though, Chris, is he has to enjoy this. 81. Enjoy this opportunity. Enjoy the chance to be on the stage. You know you can't go through. Make the most of it. Yeah, it will be interesting to hear from Paul Nicholson when 44. he sat back in this chair. Not sure when exactly that will be. It's possible it could be tomorrow because certain Chris Mason was penciled in if he didn't make it through. Because I'm sure that's off on the blow, won't it? Sitting, ne sitting next to me for and a whole night. Well, at least he'll get the chance to to get his take on it because at the end of the day, we're guessing, aren't we? We're not mind readers. 44. Paul, you require 76. To double his lead. One dart. Oh, he's gone for a 20 there for double 18, and I think he might be ruining the decision now. Forty-four. Any you require ninety-four. Bullseye or 54. I'm assuming that was aimed at double 42. 18. Paul Real pull 32. from Andy Jenkins. And Paul could step in with this double 16 for a 2-0 lead. 42. No score. Not now, Paul. And you require 52. Double 16, now the target for Andy Jenkins on the wire yeah, and in the bed. Than a second and Paul Nicholson Andy Jenkins. could have been halfway home. It's an apology from Andy. We call it the Mason these days. He started apologising for winning legs. Bird like it's Andy to throw first. I don't think he'll be apologising for winning any legs tomorrow night. 
I think he is going to relish the crowd. He is going to relish the atmosphere. And he's going to relish the music and the lights and the camera and the action. The whole showbiz effect of Saturday night at the Super Series. Well, the thing is, Chris Mason's the biggest name there, isn't he? He's the 59. best known personality in the field. But by his own admission, they all know him as a commentator, not as a darts player. 60. Much of the crowd will have never known the levels that Mason used to reach. And it may be a surprise to some of them to see what he's done this week. It may be a surprise to himself, although I'm not sure I'm buying that. I'm not buying it. He, look, he didn't 14. know he was going to take it onto the stage, but he knew what he was capable of. He played in a seniors warm-up event, didn't he, last year? And there was a average 16. somewhere above the ton, wasn't there? Well, that was for a, a treble 18 for Paul Nicholson. Some tired darts early. 44. In the morning hours here at the Super Series. And it's going to be difficult, isn't it, to keep the full focus and well, level when there 14. is nothing to play for other than pride. No such thing as tiredness in the Comchi box, though, Murph. Like Duracell bunnies, you and I. A fitting description well, for one 14. of us. <laughs> Well, Andy Jenkins thinks there might be something up here. The last score from Andy was 140. 140, Andy Jenkins' previous score. 100 came off. So he should be on 141 here. So we're just making sure that everything's okay within the scoring system. It looks as if it's all corrected itself. He's now on 141. That should be all good now. Andy, you I think he gave a little thumbs up there to the to the screen, Andy Jenkins. Didn't really matter, Andy. I know he's 22. good, but even he can't take out one eight one in three. Paul, you require one hundred and eighteen. Still finds himself behind Paul Nicholson, who can't go out now either. 78. Any you require 119. 119. Triple 20. For the double. 19. Would have been for 2-1. Nicholson wants 40. that same target. Jenks has just missed. And it would be yeah, that's game a short third consecutive line. break. It's a break after on here, Murph. <laughs> oh, I wonder whether, he's, whether a point's been left in the board as he's achieved it so a point's come out the board so there's going to be some running repairs here from the asset who throws first in the fourth well that is a bizarre moment as we head down to the to the table nicholson running some repairs this is one of those he's just changing the dart isn't he i think he's just he's got spares paul nicholson a bit like one of those pit stops in Formula One where you've got to change the front wing. It's going to take a little while, but... Look, look, out of all the players here, Paul, Paul Nicholson is a man who will come prepared. You know that from working alongside him in the commentary box. We have seen scenarios where players what haven't come prepared. I recall one with Mark Walsh against Justin Pipe at the Ali Pally. A broken dart for... 28. Pipe. And he didn't have a spare set and had to borrow one of Walsh's spare set. So he was throwing two of his own darts and one of his opponents. I remember there being an incident once at Lakeside 45. involving David Cameron, a Canadian player. Obviously, he won the Seniors Masters this year. And basically, he had a problem with luggage. And so he had to go to the shop, 64. the Lakeside shop, pick up a, a a pair of darts from basically the merchandise st uh, stand and a shirt from the merchandise stand and then play at a world championship using merchandise darts. Well, I've known it happened to a few of the players as well. And Peter Wright actually was lucky to be able to go and buy a set of his own darts from the merchandise stand in a tournament on the European tour. 57. To be honest, I don't think it would have made a difference with Peter. 
Absolutely right. One on the down, 14. Eighty five. Forty one. So Nicholson first to finish on one three four. Jenkins back on two six seven. Forty five. And it is one of those Boy, tired matches at the end of a long stint. Although both of these players have actually come into this group on Thursday and Friday respectively. One three four for Nicholson. Jenkins back on the Benno. Thirty eight. Choo choo choo. Jenkins just had to reset. He was in full motion going for the Boy, 20s again. He had to just step back and recalibrate. Nicholson, 196. He may as well have just gone for the 20 because he's left himself 163 anyway by going for the 25 and missing. Nicholson edging closer 56. here to a, a third win of the group. Sixty-five for you. Double top 40. to get a third leg of the match. Yeah, that's game short in the fourth leg. Paul Nicholson. So Nicholson won away against Andy Jenkins, who has the darts in the fifth. Fifth leg, it's Andy to throw first. Game on. Well, that makes decent reading. Something we said to cling on to. Hitting a little Eight over a third of his double attempts in this match for Nicholson. Andy Jenkins exactly a third of his three. But Nicholson buying himself more opportunities. 100. What would this do for the Nicholson confidence? Just the fact that he's finished with a win. Well, he's got himself on six points. Yeah, I don't think it really matters. I, I, I think it'll be a while before we see him play again, to be honest. So, look, it'll put him in a better mood for when he heads home and gets some sleep tonight. But I don't think in terms of darting confidence, it'll really make too much difference. What it might do is just keep the flame burning. Because 44. if he'd had a total disaster, if he'd been wiped out in every single match and not doing anything good, you might have seen him put the darts away for, for an even longer time than he has this time around. Maybe never to be seen again. So I think one thing it does has shown Paul Nicholson is he can be competitive against this level of players at the moment. It's difficult. Wes Newton 85. spoke about it in an interview Boy, earlier on when you've been so much higher. When you've achieved more than many of the players that you're playing against. But he might be signing off with a very welcome win here. And who knows, the old leg here and there over the course 16. of the last couple of nights could have meant that this win would have kept him in the race. Small margins here at the Super Series. 100 for you So can the 68. asset round off his campaign with a... Win. 68 for it. 16 or 8. Double 16. Thirty-six. And the Jenkins is back for 141. One. Something just bothered Paul before he released that last dart. Had to check his grip or his point or... Whatever it was, just a little 19. unsettled with the final dart. But he is 32. back with three in hand to get the job done. Andy Jenkins already through, Paul Nicholson already out. Sixteen. And he's not yet 51. over the line in the match. This would be a still for Rocky. 
Two sixteens. Yeah, First Sean dart in hand. Andy but now Nicholson will have the opportunity to throw for the match. Six like is pulled to throw first. Jenks thought he was thrown Demon. first. <laughs> Stand he, back, Andy. He even thought he was called Paul for a moment there because <laughs> Marco Meyer called out it's Paul to throw first and step forward Andy Jenkins. Can the real Paul Nicholson please stand up and get to the hockey? It's him who's throwing first. 16. Now you can throw, Andy. 13. Now 13, unlucky for him. One more game after this for you this evening. Richie Housen takes on Tony O'Shea. Both of those players are through, so it is a Super Series victory lap for the pair. 100. Fifty-eight. One hundred. Ideal first dart for Nicholson. One hundred. And of course, if you are tuning in to us at this late hour, do get in touch with us. Myself and Murph will answer your questions between now and 41. close of play. At MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can get in touch with myself at H underscore Deacon Media at Chris Murphy 180 there as well. We'll answer some of your questions in our 43. final game of the evening. Do get involved with Jack's us. 58. We do enjoy hearing from you. Thank you for joining us here at a late hour here in the United Kingdom. If you're Boy, tuning in in Europe, about half two in the morning. So thank you for watching us on your Friday night slash Saturday morning. 40. So one, two, seven and game for Paul Nicholson. In his last starts at the Super Series, for how long? You require 127. Remains to be seen. It's a, a step, maybe, in a direction to yet, of which we do not know the destination. 95, and you require 88. First outing in almost three years for the asset in competitive tournament darts. Is there another leg for him to play? Uh, yes, there flag. is, because Andy that's Jenkins. a brilliant bullseye from Andy Jenkins. Even Paul Nicholson affords himself a little chuckle. Seven ten, the final leg. It's Andy to throw first. The feeling Game of, on. of course, of course, and we go all the way. Look, we'll let you into some trade secrets here, 83. ladies and gentlemen. When everything's settled, and we know exactly what's going to happen. And it's late into the night. We sit in these chairs, and sometimes if a player wins the first leg, you kind of want them to win the next three so you can start 17. to think about going to slumberland. And probably part of the Paul Nicholson chuckle is he knows that he's responsible for us having to work overtime 44. this evening. I don't know what you want about. I'm enjoying your company, Murph. 44. Oh, you're expecting some kind of response in kind, are you? I was hoping for something. Well, you're not going to get it. 16. Okay, I've been told. <laughs> 44. Been given the cold shoulder in the commentary box. Save it for tomorrow. We'll see who he's going to be with tomorrow. It might well be Paul Nicholson. We don't know yet. But it will be interesting to... To get 100. his reflections. He 
It would be kind of typical for him to go and lose this game, wouldn't it? And the way things have gone for him over the last couple of days. Well, Jake Kidd's here, 196 away. 60. Then we would be one game away from Slumberland. My little drives back to houses, apartments, and hotels. Might find a mixtape or something like that to listen to on the way back. Enjoy yourself. 60. And you require 158. Well, Paul Nixon have been enjoying himself for much of this match. Not sure he's got that feeling anymore. Still a big hit. Can give him a chance, but has to rely on Jenkins missing now. One hundred. And you require so 103 plays 104. And Jenkins has a chance. On double 12. And there it is. Shot. It's typical, and isn't it, Paul? Andy Jenkins. Well, he was looking like signing off with a victory, but in the end, he loses out to Andy Jenkins. And Rocky will be back on the hockey tomorrow evening. He will be at finals night here in Portsmouth. Paul Nicholson bows out. Of course, he's going to be back at the Super Series in the commentary box. But when he plays again, that remains to be seen. One more match to come. The table topper, Richie Housen against a fellow player through to Saturday's session in Tony O'Shea.
Welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth where Andy Jenkins has just come through in a last leg decider to get the better of Paul Nicholson. It wasn't the highest quality match we've seen this week, perhaps to be expected with nothing riding on that match. Paul Nicholson playing with a little bit of more freedom out there early on. It looked as though he was going to get his third win of the week, but a superb 103 outshot in the decider gave Jenkins his sixth victory in Group B. Four out of six on the outer ring for Jenkins in that match. We can have a little look at the league table with just one more match remaining. As you can see, there'll be mo no more movement in that table. The top three will remain as they are. So Richie Hausen will finish top of the league standings because of his superior leg difference. He takes on Tony O'Shea in our last match of this session. It is, of course, Hausen, Jenkins and O'Shea who will go through to finals night. So with no more movement, there isn't anything riding on this game. But let's get into it and enjoy it nonetheless. Lads, back over to you. Cheers, Abby. Let's finish with a flourish then in Group B. Yesterday, Richie Housen ended the session with the best average of this particular group. 105.36 in a destruction of Wes Newton up against Tony O'Shea. Both players know that they are through to the final tomorrow night here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. But who's going to go into that final with a bit of a confidence boost, I wonder? Yeah, love to get this one going. The last match of Group B, a reminder that the venue behind the players will be full of people sat on those chairs is Richie to throw first. and tables enjoying darts in a different way. The intimate VIP experience that is a Saturday night at the Super Series is available for free as well. Tickets can be booked via dartshop.tv. You can be here as soon as this evening or next week at Champions Week where there's a special extra Incentive 16. as well, tickets for the Untouchables event in Portsmouth. Anybody who can get here for that, it's in December at the Portsmouth Guild Hall featuring some of the world's top professional darts players. And if you come next Saturday 100. for Champions Week finals night, you will get not only free entry to this experience of darts, but complimentary tickets to that one as well. well not just that, because why not whilst you're here? Next Saturday, come here for the finals, get your free tickets to the Untouchables on the Friday night, and then pop down to the live lounge on the Saturday. Couldn't think of a better weekend than spending what it at the darts. 40. We get the pleasure of doing that most weekends, Murph. Yep, looking forward to it. Unfortunately, myself, I won't be here. The finals night on Champions Week. We'll be doing the first half of the week from the commentary box. Require 121. We'll certainly be tuning in. Well, it all started with this shot for Richie House, and didn't it? At the very beginning of the group. In fact, he took out the 1 2 1 and the 1 6 1 against Tony O'Shea in match one on Thursday night. It was almost a case of deja vu for the hour. You require 25. And perhaps it's not a surprise that as the evening goes on, Richie Housen gets better with a nickname like the Owl. Yeah, that's game short than the first The Owl line. has been on the Richie prowl Housen. in Group B, and he takes the opening rubber against O'Shea, who will join him in the Second final line, tomorrow night. To throw first. Game on. How much would a good performance from either of the pair just put him in good spirits ahead of the final tomorrow? One hundred and nine. Team. What they can do is make other people sit up and take note. Look, Rich Houghton has already been spoken about, as is Chris Mason, but nobody is talking about Tony O'Shea, despite the fact he's 16. in the field. And if he can produce something special here, then maybe they will be. Very special. 81. I wonder if... We've had some late-night darters here at the Super Series. Or the live league in its previous guide. I'm not sure there would have been a later one than that. One hundred and eighty. I tell you what, this is a quality contest to end the group. It's interesting, isn't it? Because we always say that 
playing in the night sessions probably suits 50. the players. But actually, when you think about it, it's a good point you make there, Henry, because players will be used to playing around that 10 to 11 p.m. mark, but not often that much later than that. So playing at this point One is alien to many of them. Yeah, one of the best games we saw was at the end of yesterday evening, and it looks like we might be seeing the best of tonight 60. in the very Which last match. 81. This is from an 11 dart leg breaker throw to go 2 0 up in no time at all. Yeah, oh, this is excellent from Richie Housen. Richie this Houghton. is a way to put down a marker to the rest of the field. Well, with one performance here. Is Richie to throw first. Game on. He could make himself the favourite for finals night. One big performance. And we speak about recency bias. He'd be the last 16. man to win in this competition. So everyone would be talking about it. It'd be the most relevant game in people's minds. Mark Dubridge got through on 14. Wednesday after winning Group A. Chris Mason followed. Along with Gary Robson this afternoon from Group C. It's Housen, Andy Jenkins, Antonio O'Shea from Group B. Whoa, they are your no, Super Six. That's another maximum from Richie Housen, who is now staking a claim to be the man to beat. 83. And we might have to start looking through the record books here, Henry, because 116.44 is the average at the moment for Richie Housen. He's only a couple of points off the 16. record here at the Super Series. I know that conversations 82. will be had as to who the favourites and who the Shakers may be tomorrow evening. And of course, as the action finishes here, do keep the conversation alive at MSS Darts across our social media feeds, 85. social media channels. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be serving up Game of the Day. To be honest, you'll probably be watching this whilst watching Game of the Day on YouTube, the way that 16. Richie Housen is going Richie about his business. 116. 116 for a 3-0 lead with an average of 109.5 at the minute. 16. Tops. Yeah, that's oh, been yes. The bird line. This is Richie beautiful Housen. darts from Richie Housen. Forward like it's Tony to throw first. Game on. I think Richie Housen would like the sessions to start at half one in the morning because that's when it seems he's playing his best darts. Yeah, absolutely superb. We saw a great performance in his last match last night against West Newton. He's even better here. Three one eighties. An average of 110. Incredibly, Murph, he's hit as many 180s in three legs as he did in the entirety of last night. Whoa, and O'Shea gets in on the act as well. That's his second. Forty-one. For those of you who stayed up late... It has been worth the wait to see some quality Tuxton in the wee hours of the morning. 131. Tony O'Shea is not, in my mind, the type of player to do what Chris Mason did earlier this week and go for the ball for a 10 dart 50. leg. Oh, yes, he has he gone is. for it. He has gone for it. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, Absolutely brilliant. The Ford -like. Tony you can't smile wide enough there. The man from Stockport grinning like a Cheshire cat after that cheeky attempt on the bullseye. He couldn't pull Two off flag is Richard throw first. the shot Game in the on. same way that Chris Mason did. But he has ensured that he will not be whitewashed with a fine dozen dart leg. I have not wanted a dart to go in all week as much as I wanted that bullseye 41. to go in. Yeah, it's exhibition stuff at the end of the evening. And there's a time and a place, isn't there? And this is it, really. They're both through. They might as well relax. Enjoy it. They're definitely doing that. 
But the next time they're on the hockey, they're going to be under the utmost pressure. There'll be £5,000 on the line tomorrow night and a subsequent 20000 for the winner. Well, we're going to see a spectacular comeback. We're not going to see record-breaking averages from Richie House and here now. In fact, the gap in the averages has closed massively. Still the 45. best standard we've seen tonight. Always worth staying up right until the end. You never know what might happen. We were almost treated. To that brilliant 10 data on the ball from Tony O'Shea. He was thinking about a visit to his beloved Stockport County just an hour or so ago. Instead, he'll be on that stage again, fighting for a £5,000 first prize. One hundred and eight. He's going to have to find some other football to watch tomorrow. Big big FA Cup tie happening locally tomorrow, actually. But the big occasion is the Super Series finals tomorrow night. Both of these men will be here. They will be in the final. Can O'Shea get a 160? For Will Ruth Fraser with Richie back on 60. No is the answer. And so Houston returns to 60 to seal the win. And for the second night running, cap off the best display for the last game of the night. Game. And there it is. Shot. Richie Housen is a 4-1 victor Housen. against Tony O'Shea. Both of these men will be through to tomorrow night's final. And they'll be hoping to replicate a lot of the elements from this game in that particular occasion tomorrow. Richie Housen with an average of 98.07. Four maximums to his name. Tony O'Shea with two himself. Four from seven on the checkout. So 116 high out for Richie Housen. And so the owl is on the prowl here at the Super Series. Him and O'Shea are through to tomorrow night's final. They're going to be joined in Group B by Andy Jenkins. He sealed his place through earlier on this evening. So they are the final three names in the Super Six that are going to be playing in tomorrow night's final here at the Live Lounge. Before the night is out, though, here at the Super Series, let's get some analysis and head back up to the balcony and join Abigail Davies. Well, Chris Murphy, you've just run up from the commentary box. That was a sublime way to finish the evening. We talk about so often the importance of going into finals night with that confidence. Richie House and certainly doing that. Yeah, emphatic, wasn't it? That What a way to sign off the best performance of the night, just like he did last night as well. I wish I hadn't run now, by the way. Uh, unstoppable, Richie House, and almost like Henry signing off there. <laughs> Indeed. Let's have a look then. Confirmation of the Group B table at the final of the eight games that they've all played. It is Richie House on top, Andy Jenkins second, Tony O'Shea going through in third on six points. A word for Paul Nicholson there who finishes fourth. He did actually come up before he left this evening. Said the points sticking in the board in that final match did play on his mind slightly. That did affect him. But overall, he's looking forward to reflecting on it and most importantly, looking forward to getting back in the commentary box. Yeah, it's a strange one, Paul, isn't it? It's the last match a point gets stuck in the board and that's why he didn't win any of the matches before that. Only Paul Nicholson could come up with something like that. But yeah, looking forward to having him back in the commentary box to hear his reflections because I wonder what he has learned and, and where he goes from here. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's the same for Chris Mason who said, hasn't he, that he learned a lot about playing in a fifth consecutive day and how much that impacts you both mentally and physically. So then we can have a look at the groups for tomorrow finals night, which gets underway at 10 p.m. here on Sporty Stuff TV at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Group one, Andy Jenkins, Gary Robson, Mark Dudbridge. Group two, Chris Mason, Richie Housen, and Tony O'Shea. Which one are you looking forward to? Which player stands out for you? It has to be Richie Housen. Well, for me, the group draw actually favours Andy Jenkins. I think Richie Housen's in the toughest of the two groups, despite the position he finds himself in in the group tonight and the way he's played. The two dominant forces this week have been Mason and Housen. They're in the same group. And we all know that Tony O'Shea is capable of turning it on for a game or two. He's going to be a danger in that group as well. I think Andy Jenkins is the one player 
that I can definitely see getting to the semi-finals. So uh, I think, yeah, the groups favour Jenks. Yeah, hard to disagree with that. As for Chris Mason, then, his mentality going into finals night, because he didn't produce anywhere near his best at times today. How do you think he'll address going into finals night? Uh, almost like he did at the start of the week, without expectation. And I think we saw the weight of expectation and the weight of the week taking its toll on Chris Mason today. I think if he does manage to uh, just put that behind him, as if it's a refresh, a restart, a completely new tournament, he'll be fine. Look, I'm not going to predict that he's going to win it, but I do think he'll be there or thereabouts. Yeah, it's going to be an incredible night of dart in action here. You can be here as well, dartshop.tv, to get your free ticket to finals night. We'll be here from 10 p.m. and it'll be on Sporty Stuff TV as well. We look forward to seeing you for finals night. The Moda Super Series, brought to you in association with Bet365, Betfair, Betfred, Coral, Labrooks, Paddy Power, Unibet and William Hill.